Jeez, Terrence Pop here with another episode of Life from the Lair. What can I say? Uh, and today we are covering a subject that uh, needs to be talked about. We are now in 2024, okay? And in my opinion, we are on track to repeat the travesties of the 20th century and the 21st century, except now we're going to have AI, nuclear warheads, and people fucking around making viruses and what have you that uh, could quite literally end us. Now, um, we're going to use some historic examples, and we're going to talk about uh, 
how that went down in the past and how it's mirroring what's happening now. Uh, Steve and I have a little bit uh, different idea where stuff is going, but, you know, nobody's expected to, uh, uh, you know, uh, agree with you 100% of the time. Steve and I are 75, 85% of the time we're on the same sheet of music, but this will probably be an interesting show because we're going to talk back and forth on these particular points. All right, now we're going to cover China, Ukraine, Russia, Europe, the United States, and some various other bullshit that's going on. All right, now it's Tuesday. Blake's not here. We got Battle Dwarf on station, and we have Evil Shaggy. Now it's come to our attention that uh, a former guest who we had on the show, Gonzo Lera, uh, Coach Red Pill, is no longer with us. Um, uh, I should have probably taken it a little more serious when I heard the reports of him getting picked up by uh, what, what is the Ukrainian equivalent of the KGB? I don't know. I don't SVU know or some crazy shit like that. I don't know they are a special police. And they released him, and apparently they picked him up like two or three weeks later when he tried to leave the country. Yeah. And uh, it is rumored that he died of so-called pneumonia in a Ukrainian prison. All right. Now, the thing that really pisses me off about this is, one, he's an American citizen. Number two, uh, he's not a military tactician guy, and he was just talking about... He's just a dude. He's just a dude, and he did not deserve what happened to him. And we are still talking about sending billions upon billions of dollars over to this fucking country so they can fight off Russia. Well, as far as I'm concerned, Russia and Ukraine could go fuck themselves. I am done giving money to them, and I am going to do my part to make sure that the name Gonzo Lira is the torpedo that sinks the fucking Ukraine, those motherfucking bastards. All right, so let's have a moment of uh, silence for him and have a toast to Mr. Gonzo Lira. Here you go. Sorry, brother. Cheers, man. Let's do a quick. Uh, There's only so much I can do, man. I, yeah, I don't have enough power or pull to. There is no saving them all. That doesn't. Yeah, that's I not can't. A thing. Nope. Can't not a, let's take a quick look at uh, Gonzalo, real fast, and uh, now hopefully it, it won't go on mute. So this is a. Hopefully it does not go on mute. This is a clip from Tucker Carlson's piece on Gonzalo. Uh, let let us know in the chat if you can hear hear it or not. Yeah. He's sailing on, sailing on. European economy, people are starting to die of hypothermia in the UK because they don't have access to the cheap energy of Russia from before. See? Yep. And so everything that the West has thrown at the Russians has boomeranged right back at them. And so now they're panicking and they're trying to figure out a way out of the situation. And they figured that if you throw more tanks, it'll help. It won't help. The, uh, the Ukrainians, rather, they had like something like uh, 2,000 tanks before the start of this conflict. You think a couple of hundred now is going to help? I mean, why are they asking them? Because those 2,000 tanks are gone. That's basic, you know? And so what? Uh, a couple of hundred, maybe 300 tanks. Is that going to change the outcome of the conflict? Oh, it won't. The Russians are just going to destroy them. In the West. This is, uh, this is just a normal dude. He's a normal guy. I never got to meet him or anything like that uh, or see or be on the show with him like Pop did, but I've listened to some of his stuff. What he was is a normal guy who had the heart and the balls and the spine to get out there and report on what was really going on. And yep. for him to die like this in his shitty Eastern jail and it, the jails there, you got to understand you're in a cell. You might get water. You might get food. Maybe. You're not getting heat. You're not getting air conditioning. Uh -huh. There's probably rats. You may have a blanket or you may not. It's not like American prisons at all. Nope. Uh, so the conditions that he was in were shitty to begin with. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, and listen, the, the, we need to spread the word across the MGTOW Red Pill community that uh, we need to start educating the, the, the masses of what's really going on. Uh and I'll, listen, they they took his life. I, I personally don't believe he died of pneumonia. I don't think he did. He was a year older than me. I think they beat on him, and he just, at his age, you're just not recovering from that. Yeah. 
and he died. And there's really no reason to beat on him and torture him. He doesn't know shit. It was probably just punitive. And as far as I'm concerned, the Ukraine can rot in fucking hell. Yep. And let's not forget that uh, Joe Biden traded the man that was the inspiration for the movie Lord of War mm -hmm. for an American-hating lesbian basketball player. I think that's a fantastic trade, though, uh, for Russia. It was for Russia. <laughs> yeah, for, uh, for them, yeah. Yeah, and listen, as far as I'm concerned, that female basketball player legitimately brought a controlled substance into Russia and got fucking spanked for it. You fuck around, you find out. I know of dozens of cases where guys in the U.S. military violated SOFA agreements and ended up in the prisons where uh, Germany, Japan, Korea, Okinawa for fucking around and finding out. Uh, Brittany Griner, by the way, is a straight up dude. Yeah, I, I, that's a that's a guy. I'm sorry. Yeah, it it's not Brittany. It's Bart. <laughs> well, uh, I, Blake says that you know he uh, you know used to film her when she used to play at Oakland University, and technically, I mean, I guess she must be a female with a deep voice. I don't know, but I, I'm not going to try to pick genders with this particular crazy bitch. Or dude, I don't. That's, I, we don't, I don't even care about that. I don't care about that. Care about that. I only care about the fact that our country allowed the Ukraine to torture a man to fucking death. He was a U.S. citizen, and we did fuck all about it. Oh, that's not the first time. No, I know that's not the first time. When amber light went dark in Korea, uh, we lost people in that, and the United States State Department didn't touch. Didn't even try to help them. Yep. That needs to come to an end, man. That, 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 as far as I'm concerned, we should cut off all support to Ukraine. Let them die in the fucking vine. And, you know, if, if any of the leadership from Ukraine flee the country, we hunt them down and prosecute them. Or uh, hand, them over, that notion. hand them over to the Russians and they can handle it. You, know, you want to cut off the Ukraine, all you have to do is cut off the U.S. State Department. Correct. It's where, it's where they're getting literally where all the funding and everything is coming from. Yep. That's absolutely correct. All right. Sorry about the bad news, gentlemen. Uh, but that's, I, listen, the truth isn't always, you know, pleasant. And it's not always the shit you want to hear. And nobody hates uh, somebody more deeply than a person who speaks the truth. Yeah. There you go. All right. First source. Let's pull this shit up. Moving on down the row, former State Department official warns military is planning to derail the Trump presidency. So what the hell is all this about? You have to understand what's been going on since the Eisenhower administration back in the 1950s. It dates back that far when the U.S. War Department, yes, we had a war department, was separated into the Defense Department, and a chunk of it was rolled over into the State Department, which had existed, but the State Department's mission then changed. Uh -huh. So at that point, uh, a Senator Joe McCarthy went on a crusade to get all the communists out of the U.S. government, and he was laughed out and ended up drinking himself to death. Yeah. The thing is, Joe was wrong on one key point it was way worse than he thought it was and the timing and the timing yes over the years uh starting then but really ramping up under the first george bush and a lot of people won't like to hear this and i don't care once again the truth hurts uh -huh. george bush was one of the first new world order presidents he even said it on camera yes he did started replacing the American generals, the patriotic generals, your Pattons, your Pershings, uh, those guys. Tommy Franks was still a good U.S. general at the time. Well, in the 50s and 60s, you, you had a lot of generals who actually had uh, time slogging lead in the, line, in the front lines during World War II. There were a couple in the 50s that had seen World War I. Yeah. There were one or two that had seen World War One. Mm -hmm. At any rate, these new generals were handpicked to be loyal to the administration. And from a 
about the late seventies, mid eighties, more and more, the administration of the United States, the unelected bureaucratic class began taking over operations. That's why when you have elections, nothing changes. It doesn't right. matter who you get in as president or as senator or as congressman because it's being run by right. these back, back of the room bureaucrats. But it's a 30 pound brain individual who doesn't have any visibility and is not elected quite literally sticking their hand up the ass of the current president at the time and treating him like a sock puppet. And today with Joe Biden or, you know, the dictator in chief is like to call him. Yeah. They literally put their hand up his ass and turned him into an ATM and he's giving money left and right to whoever they fucking want. Yeah, that's, that's correct. And he's also uh Congress appoints generals, by the way, in the military, for those of you who have never experienced this before, any, non-commissioned officer above the rank of sergeant first class and any officer above the rank of major goes through a special session of congress to be approved for, approved for promotion correct these generals are on a really tiny list oh they're, and i know they're oh. su such a tiny list there's and, a i found an article on it i couldn't find it fast enough tonight and here's the thing about that yeah small list the promotion to general First of all, the promotion for lieutenant colonel to full bird colonel is an absolute backstabbing shit show. And a lot of those guys who make it to full bird colonel in the current environment are experts at sucking dick and kissing ass. And when they go up to general, they literally just get better at it. Yes, that is correct. And I, listen, I, in 33 years in the military, I served alongside thousands of officers of all of those officers, 12 were outstanding. And I think yeah. of that 12, two of them made it to colonel. The rest were stopped at major or lieutenant colonel. And it seemed like the officers that were ate up from the floor up were incompetent or mediocre. They went up the chain. They were controllable. Yeah. And and listen, they were controllable. I had two good general officers, uh, Tommy Franks. I served under Tommy Franks. Did you? Isn't that the one you boot spurred? Yep. Yep. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah, we That's spurred a... his, but he came into our skiff, and one of our guys hid under the floorboards in the skiff. The, so there's a there's such a thing as a portable skiff. Yes. And the floor has got panels that you can lift up and go under there and hide. And we got the general in front of the map. And we did this is over here, sir, and we're moving things over here, sir, and this is going on over here. Meanwhile, the floorboard goes, e and Bill's hand comes out and goes, doink, doink, and puts sticky note spurs on the back of his boots <laughs> general leaves two seconds later his aide this major comes flying in oh fucking spur the gentleman uh, losing his mind and the general comes in behind him no no it's fine nobody screwed with me in years that was some funny stuff who oh, gave everybody coins <laughs> that's good he, thought it was his, he was a really good sport about it um Anyway, these generals that are being picked at the Pentagon, what's going on is they're literally openly talking about a coup if President Trump is elected to office. Correct. The general officers of the United States military are openly talking about committing treason if Donald Trump is reelected to the presidency of the United States of America. Openly. All right. Just now let that sink in. If he's elected by the country. There is absolutely no reason for the military to do what they're doing other than the fact that we're seeing a phenomena take place to our military, which has already taken place in the early 1900s. And we'll get to that in a little while as we progress in the show. One thing you have to realize is the insurgency has already happened. Yes. We are, if we decide to fight back, if we decide to resist against this, we are the counter insurgency. The insurgency has already happened. It's been going on for a long time. Yes, it has been going on yeah. for a long time. A lot of people will argue different time points, but it's been going on for and a long time. The main way you can time. take the wind out of the sails of what these individuals in the background are fucking you know, doing is you fucking need to just fire them. They're not elected. Literally, just like you're done, get out, pack your bags. Yes, that is. You show correct. up with like four or five security guards, clean out your desk, you're fucking done. You have enough time, drop a retirement packet, we'll process it and get the fuck out. And or we won't. 
Well, here's the thing. You, if you don't try them and convict them, then you, you got to deal with the whole retirement pension thing. Got it. it. But that that is the peaceful way of doing it. It, it just gets worse from there. And I, I listen. I, You're a much nicer guy than I am. I, I am blank. not condoning it. Yeah, I am too old to participate, but I am a student of history and I can see where this is going. We're literally repeating we're rinsing and repeating the same fucking patterns going back Part to of the it is because 1600s. some of the major players are the same players. Yes. They don't learn. And it's different people, obviously. Nobody's lived 130 years here. We're not saying anything screwy. Yeah. But it's the same organizations. It's the same schools of thought. It's yeah. the same mindsets. And I have no idea why we keep recycling the socialist communist fucking concept. Because we saw how much of a fucking miserable example that was in the 19 fucking hundreds. Because from 1901 to 1999, hundreds of millions of people were put to the sword or starved by that government model. Now, moving into the 21st century, where we have nuclear fucking weapons. And not only do we have nuclear fucking weapons, we have nuclear weapons we could put we could put in fucking cannons. And quite literally, you're allowing a lieutenant colonel to have the fucking button to start arm of fucking Geddon. This is absolutely fucking insane. The people at top are morally corrupt. They've been bought out and they are fucking unpatriotic. They hate this country. We in my opinion, they need to be fired. Plain and simple. Have some tea, Pop. Have some tea. All right. All right. <laughs> um, these stateless individuals, the ones that Pop is describing as uh, non-patriotic, they don't. They don't believe in a country. They believe in themselves in a country. One of the reasons that this Marxist idea has prevailed is young people are gullible. <laughs> okay young people are gullible they'll believe all kinds of shit i believed all kinds of shit when i was young academics your professors the elite academic class if you will <laughs> uh they believe their own stink and they'll write all these things and they'll give each other accolades and papers and this that they really believe that all of these things are true because they've never stepped out of their classroom and they've never so much as gotten a paper cut while filling out a piece of paper yeah. for a job resume in, you know, the except for the one time that they applied at the college and all of their friends hired them. Uh-huh. And, and, and you you've been exposed to the higher the higher level officers, right? Oh my god, yes. They literally have virtually no contact with their troops. It's they sit behind the desk, they have the power of royalty. It's staff controls everything every oh. aspect of their life is controlled. i was on staff yeah yeah but one of the, like another reason why we're not meeting our recruiting goals is because we've had a volunteer army since the mid-70s and these general officers are still wielding the type of power they had in the 1700s and the 1800s when they just conscripted people now if you want to have a volunteer army you can't have general officers or colonels or what have you willy nilly let you know letters of reprimand, you know, bar of reenlistment without a due process. Like quite literally, we need to redo, in my opinion, the the powers and duties of the generals out there. And most of all, we need to pick our officers from the lower level enlisted who have a track record of success. Because I don't give a fuck if you were the captain of your football team in high school and college. I don't give a shit if you were on the debate team. Fuck you. I want guys in, you know, officers. If if I was to serve again, I would like an officer who'd been there, had done that, have a had a proven fucking track record. Those are the guys you should pour your the resources in, send them to West Point to like remint them as officers because West Point and Annapolis and a lot of these other military schools taking people out of high school. They're fucking shit. They fucking suck. I'm, I've said it. Fuck them. We need to redo the entire fucking thing. The 1800s, the 1700s, the 1900s are fucking over. I Sorry. think that warrants one of these. Yeah. 
I, I, like I'm saying, like, t- like listen. You want back, a hug, man? No, back in the day, when you had people had to like maybe load the rifle, and if you were lucky, you get four to six shots off in a minute, right? And they would line up in lines, and they're fucking different colors, so they could see each other to fight on that. That doesn't exist anymore. Quite literally, you can see the thermal signature of a meat sack walking around. Push a fucking button and drop a round right on top of his fucking head. There is no room for error. You know, officers are going to mistake, make mistakes. They need to learn. Well, in the 1800s, you get 40 or 50 dudes fucking killed. All right, it's a learning curve. In the 21st fucking century, when you can get whole armies wiped out in minutes, there is no excuse for that anymore. You need to have the fucking best of the best at the fucking top. Period. Do you feel better, man? I, I do. <laughs> Am I wrong? You're not wrong. All right. You're not wrong. I just want to know if you feel better. Uh, yeah. Listen, this whole thing always gets me off in a rant. Man. I know. Anyways. I've seen I've seen this rant before. I've seen this particular pop rant several times, actually. Uh, we've had this discussion several times. Many, many, many years ago, well over 10 years ago now, we would sit in front of Pop's fireplace in his place up uh, in Berkeley and uh, stare yep. at the fire and he would have this rant. So this is not a new rant yeah, at all. No, and, and literally, <laughs> I'd be going off and he'd be drinking the soup. Yeah. So we're ranting again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Bring it the fuck out. There was a third class there. The kids who are dumb and gullible. The academics who believe their own stink. The third class is the rich and powerful elites. No rich and powerful elite ever wants to get less rich and powerful. Correct. That it becomes like it's worse than heroin. It's worse than any drug you can get. Power? There's a reason why power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. That is 110% correct. So these generals now have power and they're given all kinds of perks and benefits. And that's the drug right there. These high salaries that these guys get, do you think that's to reward them for a job well done? No, it's to keep them on a leash. We give you all of this money and these benefits and these powers, and you do as we say. Okay. Yep. And the perfect example, General Milley. Yes. Like, when I watched him, like, I really want to know what this white rage is. Like, I'm like, oh, my fucking God. What a goddamn fucking sellout. And I hope to God I never meet him Turns face out face. he was the commander at the... the uh, joint security area on the dmz when i was up there a lot we patrolled out of that yep. exact area it is a very good chance that i met the guy and i'm here to tell you that every single member of the first the 506 on the dmz was all white boys mm-hmm. because it was a volunteer infantry assignment you had to volunteer to go up there and then you had to pass certain criteria and a pt test and be a certain height and the whole nine yards, because you were going to be a DMZ guard. <laughs> It'd be 5'10 or higher. That's correct. Yep. Literally all of those clowns, all white boys, yep. including General Milley. Yep. And, and listen, um, whenever you have to ask for volunteers, and this is just my observation in the military, airborne units, mainly white. Rangers, airborne rangers, volunteer for the infantry, volunteer for airborne, volunteer for ranger duty, mainly white. Tactical intelligence. Yeah. We had like two black guys. Yeah, correct. Uh, why that is, I have no idea, other than the fact that maybe that they're, they're, you know, they're physically weaker when it comes can to it being be, extreme can I, cold. Can I be honest about this? And they can't swim. Can I be honest about yeah. this? We love doing shit that we know will probably get us killed. It's a white boy thing. We will do <sighs> stupid shit that will get us killed. Ah, and, and laugh. I mean, I volunteered to be Lurse. Right. Which is long range reconnaissance. Yep, same. They drop you 30 to 50 miles behind the lines. Yep. And there it really is no plan to bring you back. No. You have to you have to walk back on your own. Yeah. Or or hope you can hit that extraction point on exactly the correct hour at exactly the correct spot and don't be late. And if yep. you're not all there, uh, somebody's either, getting left. Yeah. Either somebody's getting left or you're all getting left. Yes. Yeah. We have uh we have a uh, we like to do stupid shit. We we do. Yeah. It is. It's a white boy thing. I guess. You yeah. don't see black kids jumping BMX bikes over piles of broken glass on concrete. Yeah, but that was in 70s. Shorts. It, what, still, though, <laughs> in 
You don't see that. that. Yeah, I know. I did that. I used to yeah. do the same shit. Wearing flip flops. <laughs> yeah. 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 What are you gonna do? Yeah. We we like the stupid shit. Okay, back to the America's top generals thing here. Um dangerous and unfit to be commander in chief. Again, these guys are just outright advocating for treason. What a, yeah, also, outright advocating for treason. What about the 51 security experts who signed off on uh, that Russian collusion shit, which w- was later proven to be absolute bullshit? Not only bullshit, but manufactured yeah. by the State Department and an FBI agent. And, and Hillary paid for it. Yes. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, CNN, they're not going to fucking succeed. Top generals feared Trump would attempt a coup after the election, according to the book. Two days after the January 6th attack on the Capitol, Donald Trump's top military advisor, Joint Chief Chairman Mark Milley, who's a dirtbag, single-handedly took secret action to limit Trump from potentially ordering a dangerous military strike or launching nuclear weapons. He wasn't going to launch nuclear weapons. Get a grip. I, I don't believe that. I don't believe that for a second. And if Milley admitted to anything like this, Milley admitted to committing treason because Donald Trump was still the president and still his commander in chief. Correct. Well, there was that uh, that one time that Milley said, oh, yeah, if we're ever going to uh, launch a strike on China, I'm going to go ahead and give them a call and give them a heads Which up. Which is also treason. Yeah, that's also treason. Yep. This, we need to start taking these words seriously. Uh, yeah. Your voices do matter. Spontaneous utterances. Yes. Your Dave. voices do matter. If enough of us show up one form or another, whether it's letters or being on the steps of the Capitol, they notice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they do. They notice. But, you know, uh, there's, uh, are we putting Millie up again? I but, hate. Look at that guy's face. Yeah, I just put him up on the tab there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, one, he's got dick sucking mouth. He's cross. I tell you, he looks like a freaking cartoon general. He yeah. looks like he'd be a general in a Mel Brooks movie. Now listen, you know, Mexico called. They want their general back. Yeah. yeah right. I was, I was going to say, Millie looks like he's tasted a uh, sour <laughs> sausage or two. Yes. And he's got permanent sour sausage face, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, that's probably pretty much true. The cross-eyed thing there is, uh, <laughs> you know, staring at a small target from close range. Uh uh, he September he he September didn't retire. He retired back in September, but um, he said that the troops take an oath to the Constitution, not capitalized by Reuters. I know, and not a wannabe dictator. Now, where this dictator thing comes from, from Millie's mouth, I have no freaking idea. Can you give me any evidence at all of Donald Trump acting like a dictator? Well. Well, the media says he is, so I guess yeah, it must be true. It must be true. The media says it. Everyone else is saying that. But l- listen, he, if he was to get elected and turn into a raging dictator, I would be against him as well. I yeah. swore an oath many times to the Constitution of the United States when I enlisted, and there was no expiration date on that oath. That's correct. Yeah, uh, yeah. I have three honorable discharges back at the House. Yeah. Yeah, there you, you go. get you get a discharge each time you re-enlist. You are discharged from the military, and uh, after your second one, everybody makes the joke. I'm just going to grab this and run now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, yeah, no, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> every time you re-enlist, they make you raise your hand and retake the oath. That's correct. Uh, that he would say that Trump was a wannabe dictator, and he's saying uh, that he resisted Trump and all these things coming out as he retires. It's un- just unbelievable levels of not only treason to his boss, but to the country. He did swear an oath. And part of that oath is to obey the orders of the commander in chief, not pick and choose and decide for yourself what the commander in chief is doing. That's not how it works. No, nope. That's not how it works. When we join the army, we basically voluntarily give up a bunch of our rights. And we signed a blank check up to including our life and maybe our mortal fucking soul for this country. Yeah. Because I know lots of guys who went forward on many wars and deployments and quite literally lost their, they lost themselves in a war zone and they never fucking recovered. And a lot of them are dead now. One of my uncles, uh, went to Vietnam, then served 30 years, 
went to a bunch of other places and uh, he was in Vietnam in like the sixties and came back, kissed my aunt and disappeared for 27 years. And I'm at, I'm at basic in, Wow! in 94 and I call my dad and he says, uncle Dick came back. I'm like, what? He says, uncle Dick came back. It's out of nowhere. He just showed up again and he lived the rest of his life on his farm with his wife who had waited for him the whole time. My aunt had waited for him the whole time. Mm-hmm. She just kind of knew that he would eventually find his way home. And he did. Mm-hmm. But listen, man, I, you don't really understand what you are putting on the line when you decide to enlist in the military. Yeah. And uh, I mean, let's face it. There's a reason why I say the 65 and out plan. Because ever since the Korean War, a little bit after, the average life expectancy of anyone who served more than four years in the military is in your mid to late 60s. That's true. Because they give you all, you're exposed to just a boatload of chemicals, vaccinations, you're sent to like, you know, crazy environments, you're breathing all kinds of smoke, dust, what have you. And, And it all adds up, man. It, it does. God knows what in some of those countries. That yeah. Literally, there's no knowing what we've walked through or crawled through. Or Yeah, listen, I had to bury a guy, Sergeant First Class Sweeney, who literally caught uh, some kind of bacterial infection from the dust in That's a, Iraq. One. That's not the first one I've heard of. And it, it could have been cured with antibiotics if they caught it in time. But by the time they caught it, it had destroyed his bone marrow, you know, you know ate away his nerves was starting to destroy his intestines and stomach he he survived like i think 11 or 12 surgeries to try to fix and take I, back that one I, at one point just i don't want to well that. yeah at some point they literally like <clears throat> his his treatment was comfort yeah that means you you're done yeah the engines are off and you're you're gliding in and uh you know i had to put together the detail to bury this guy and i was he came to the unit and I think he was, you know, reminiscing because he was dying. And I literally looked him in the face. I said, hey, bro, how you want this to go down? You want us to bury you? Or you want some nameless fucking dweebs from Fort Trump? Yeah. Now, um, I know Millie didn't see any combat while he was on the DMZ. I was there at the exact same time in Korea. He would have been a lieutenant colonel. And I see Biden saying uh unflinching in the face of danger and biden claims he once ran across a bridge booby trapped with mines to stop two battle tanks evacuating wounded troops from driving across it and where did this take place was this in the gulf war i don't have any idea but the last time we dealt with bridges booby trapped with mines was like ramagan world war ii yeah. maybe in korea you have no 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 they just blow the bridges all right. They didn't booby trap him with mines. Hmm. Um, the Korean War, I, I could do a whole show. Yeah, I know. I know. You were you're there. As, no, no. Dad, you need to see my, the book collection. No, I got you. Um, I have a book signed by General Peck. Hmm. I met General Peck. He was the commander of the Koreans in the Korean War. Hmm. Anyway, carrying on. Bridges mined. I looked through Millie's career, and let's bring our little friend up here as a matter of fact and this is where we dissect him uh, hey man you uh, ran across all, bridges with mines look at that i mean all of that fruit salad no all right now listen this is the way officers get awards after a certain point once they become a commander they have staff and their staff wants to get a good oer so they're always putting their commander in for all of these fucking awards that they don't earn they don't rate but yet they still get them and though and i've talked about this you know probably a good half a dozen times on this particular show what's that next to his jump master wings uh the other wings over his name over there that's korean airborne yeah he's yeah he's got foreign jump wings he's got uh was that a scuba bubble Is jump he got a master bubble? it looks like a scuba when the bubble. hell did he get a bubble it could be that or a halo wings the the foreign wings that's korean yeah i, I recognize those and then his uh he's affiliated with the 101st you can see that on his right under his name tag yeah and he's got a couple presidential unit citations and shit yeah that's pretty normal and here's the sick thing this guy's ranger qualified and special forces qualified and he's still a fucking fruit loop in my opinion 
He's retired now, so he doesn't. He's not going to get a benefit of the doubt. Fuck that guy. Yeah, no, fuck this guy. He says uh, it says he he had multiple command and staff positions in six divisions in a special forces group throughout the last forty four years to include command first five oh six. That's where I would have been there at the same time. I looked him up. It was ninety six to ninety eight, which is when I was in Korea and I was in the, on the DMZ from ninety seven to ninety eight. Uh, Second Infantry Division. He. Uh, I don't recall him commanding 2nd Infantry, 2nd Brigade Combat Team from 10th Mountain, Deputy Commanding General 101st Airborne, 10th Mountain Division, Commanding General 3 Corps, Commanding General U.S. Army Forces Command. When did he earn that tab, and why would they let him have a tab if he was never a group guy? I don't know. There are no group guy commands here. Yeah. I mean, that. listen, man. Oh, he says he was an operation just, uh, just cause in Panama. All right, he did uh, the multi the multinational force observer bullshit in Sinai. I did that. Yeah. I was in just cause. I never hold the uphold democracy. The Haiti fucking operation. I knew guys in Joint Forge. Uh huh. Yep. During freedom, Afghanistan also deployed to Kamalia, Com- Colombia, Somalia, and served two years on the DMZ. Yeah. Uh, the Somalia deployment. If he was there for Gothic Serpent, I I can call guys right now and it's, ask it's, if he was actually fucking there. Yeah, this sounds let, padded to me. Yeah, this, well, with uh, Ranger and Special Forces tabs and a bubble and Jump Master wings, and there are no assignments here that match up with those. Really, correct. Yeah, I mean, t- if you're gonna get a scuba bubble and all of that shit, you got to be a team, Dad. Oh, dude, you're gonna be a group. Yeah, you got to be in group. You don't get that bubble. For- no. no. Yeah, you show up as a you know a captain for a team for two or three years. They're gonna send you to several of these schools. Before you show up, they will send you to Special Forces School, which is a whole fucking meat grinder. I talked to a lot of those officers who went through that shit. But yeah, man. The there, scuba bubble, my understanding is it's one of the hardest ones. Well, I I, I went to pre-scuba, and I couldn't even do the crossovers. What's a crossover? Well, you, you go underwater, you swim to the other end of the pool and come back. Yeah, at least when I was doing it for the regiment, it was there and back three times. And I could only do, I could do there and back, there and back. I go back again, and on the way back, I would pass out. All the way underwater. There uh, all the way underwater. What's the distance? Uh, I, think, I think, was it 35, 25, 35 meters, something like that? I used to be able to do in a standard Olympic pool. That's 25 meters, yeah. I think. I could do there, back, there, and halfway back. Yeah, I mean that's where I passed out. <laughs> oh, okay. But the, you know, the, uh, and I, I would, I passed out twice. They pulled me out of the water, and they're like, "Hey, Ranger, you go again." I'm like, "Yeah." And the captain's like, "No, you're, you're gonna you're die." Done. Yeah, you're, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna keep going until you die. You're gonna die. Yeah, uh, I respect it. They're like, "Hey, we respect you, but we can't have you dying here." Now, Let's... here's the thing that really caught my eye. He graduated from Princeton. You got to have a daddy or an uncle or some benefactor to be a white boy and get into Princeton now. You just do. Well, I mean, he, I know it was back in the day, but even then it was true. Yeah, it, it did. Back then it was you, hard to get in. You there. needed to have somebody to get you in the door unless you were a serious egghead. And eggheads don't become four star generals. No. Uh, and then he went to Columbia, which for me is the real tell because that uh, most people have no idea is where the Frankfurt school that came over from Germany in the 1930s. That's where they landed. Wow. Was Columbia 1932, a guy named Herbert Marcuse, one of the original members of the Frankfurt school. Hmm. He's the one who created the feminists that busted the feminist movement, the militant lesbian scum society for cutting up men. Oh yeah. That's Herbert Marcuse. Wow. I don't know. I mean, I did it. I pretty did a pretty deep dive on that. Columbia is a hotbed. Well, I've been to Columbia a couple times, and uh, I was only there for very short amounts of time. Chasing skirts doesn't count. No, no. What? Uh, It's counter drug. Oh, okay. But I have NDAs. I'm not. No, University of Columbia. Oh, okay. I thought Columbia, the country. Ah, you got me all fucked up here. Yeah, no, no, no. Columbia, the university, University of Columbia. All right, because I was going to say, if you went to Columbia, that is in beautiful women with immaculate tans. No, no. No, no, no. The the university on the I think it's Massachusetts. Yeah, you know, Boston. 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 
Yeah, Boston, Boston so. Massachusetts. Well, I was, I was going to say if uh, if anyone cost. wants if anyone wants to uh, an expert on uh, the Colombian women, uh, hit up our buddy uh, Schmuck in the uh, Odyssey chat. He knows. Oh. <laughs> he knows. I what you got. Every it, it's like every group guy I knew was married to a Colombian or a German, a Venezuelan. Uh, so a couple of Venezuelans. Uh, some of the Navy guys, a lot of the Navy guys are married to Turkish girls. Oh, really? They get that uh, in Cyrillic assignment. Ah. Uh, anyway, that neither here nor there. Columbia University is in New York City. I happen to glance down and see that. Thank you very much. Rumble chat. Um, anyway, Columbia is the hotbed for communists in the United States of America. The Frankfurt School got there or got in there in 1932, and we were off to the red races. Yes. Yay. So, yeah, exactly. Yay. So, yeah, here's us two cranky old NCOs taking a look at Millie's record here with his Ranger tab and Special Forces and Scuba Bubble. Looking at his assignments, and, and they don't match. Theirs, it doesn't match. It doesn't match. It doesn't match up. So you know, I'm being the only uh, non-military guy on the panel here. Yeah. Um, basically, what Millie can do, or what Millie did, was trade in his pride and honor for this country, and traded that in for a set of golden knee pads and some chapstick or some flavored yeah. lube. And stars for his uh, lapel, and and uh, and a cushy golden parachute. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know, be correct. He's going to get some kind of job in the civilian sector. Already has it. Yeah. Already has it. I guarantee you, he's already walked into something that's amazingly cushy. Yes. I if he doesn't have something on the civilian sec sector, I guarantee you, the CIA is already trying to rig him in. No, four star generals don't do that kind of thing, man. No. Uh. Uh. That's not where four star generals go. <laughs> and they get cushy assignments on boards They're, he's never going to do anything but golf ever again and uh i'm going to be honest he'll probably work a civilian job for five to ten years and he'll be double retired and it'll be over yeah because he's he's old he's like what 60 something right now? exactly jimmy the guys who go do that stuff from the officer corps it's the ranges between captain and probably lieutenant colonel yes okay they go into the the dark programs they go to sia yeah yeah, there uh, may or may not have been a program called, called Great Skills back in the day that I brushed up against. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you heard of Great Skills? I heard of it. Yeah, that they had a lot of that. They had a lot of ring knockers in that element. Yep. Uh, if there was ever an element like that, and the last time I heard of it was 20 years ago anyway. so That's all theory and conjecture now. Theory and conjecture. So we've got this general going to Columbia University, which is a hotbed of communism, which takes us to our next segment. Because this, the pattern we're seeing now, it's already fucking happened. Take and it. it's going to happen again current year. They are literally driving all of the patriots, all of the good officers who aren't yes men, out of the fucking service. And there, there, we, we, I have seen some uh, articles that, you know, the white guys are not enlisting in the military. I wonder why, because they drove them the fuck out on purpose. And we've already seen this once. So pull it up. Well, I mean, there's there's still, you know, uh, bringing in the uh, the white guys. They just uh, those guys are just putting on skirts and growing their hair out, putting lipstick on, saying, "Oh, I'm a woman." I, so I, there's there I, there's I, still I, white there's still white men in the military. They're just not identifying as men. Yeah. It does. Oh, it doesn't look like I pulled that. I pulled that article up here, man. Which uh, one? There was an article today that I saw in the paper where recruiting efforts are falling short, and the majority of it is white males are not joining the military. And there was an article in a paper from the, uh, God, I can't remember where it was from, but straight up, the article asks, where are the honkies at? <laughs> it was basically the headline, where are nice. the honkies at? Nice. The white boys are not joining the military anymore. And I guarantee well, you it was a white female that wrote that article. Well, here's the yeah. thing. The volunteer army, most of the people who enlisted when they're young had family members who came from the military. And if you have enough people in the military who got a bad taste for it because they were fucked up by the toxic leadership, they're telling their kids, hey, fuck this. 
It's not worth it. Don't do it. And we're seeing it in the recruiting numbers. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Go to, go to a trade school, become a mechanic, become an electrician, become That's a plumber. Right. Yeah. Because people can't fucking function without running water, the lights to keep their their houses lit, and the car to keep them to going for point A to point B or going to work and whatnot. Yeah. Choose right. those three trades or trucking. Become a truck yeah. mechanic. Do what I did. Nine months, year in and out. Done. All right. So here we got the uh, the Red Army purge that we're going to cover here in what 1941, right? It really started all the way back in 1917, but the big Army purge correct was uh, around 1940, 1941. But it, it took the communists a good 20 years to get up to full steam. And they literally gutted their military to almost nothing. And, you know, you know, Hitler saw that and said, fuck it. We're going to fuck these guys up. Yeah. So what this is, the Bolsheviks were uh, basically narcissistic megalomaniacs. A lot of them were complete sociopaths and psychopaths. No. They were. It's just what it is. People at the top are like, yeah. oh, oh I know. Crazy. Crazy. Unbelievable stuff. Just yeah. absolutely unbelievable stuff. Um, so what they did was remove the warrior class and Russia had a real serious warrior class. The Cossacks. The Cossacks and the Russians themselves, not just the Cossacks, the Cossacks were like, they're a thing. The Russian people themselves had a warrior tradition. They were a manly man culture. Yes. The Bolsheviks got rid of anybody in the military like that and only kept the sycophants, bootlickers and loyalists. Now, you can't build an army with that kind of thing. Not an effective one. They'll lie to you if they think that's what you want to hear. They'll only fight the battles you they think they want that you want them to fight. And they won't do anything without you telling them to do it. It's kind all, of like the way Russia is right now. All three of those elements will yeah. tank you. Correct. Russia and Ukraine. Let's be fair. They're both that way right now. Yeah. They really are. Yeah, Ukraine I, doesn't I, have anything like an organized military. Not they anymore. Just, they simply no. do not. No. Um, and we talked about this a bunch of episodes back. I think it doesn't matter how you train these people. It doesn't stick. No, it doesn't. All you do is give them better tools to do, do the nothing mayhem that they were going to do. Either butcher a population or do nothing at all. Well, the, and end up butchered. Listen, the Russian military doesn't have an NCO, a professional NCO corps. And you, for an effective military, you need a professional non-commissioned officer corps. Yeah, you need a layer between the troops and the commanders. Correct. And if you're going to... And all of those guys, those NCOs, the good ones are getting run out of the military. The few good officers that I knew are, are now gone. You know, it's a, it's a total clusterfuck. All right, so we got the whole purge. Uh, and here you can see the purge. Here's the 1941 purge. Did, did you put it... Did you share the screen? Uh, yeah. All right, let me check. Make sure we're on the... He yep, he's yeah. got it. All right, good, good. All right. Yeah. yeah. I'm not as non-Blake as I used to be. I'm, uh, I'm like second level going up to third level now. All right, all right. I, I... <laughs> Leveling up. But like when I, I remember watching this on the History Channel and I'm like, were they out of their fucking mind? What the fuck were you thinking? This is what happens when you have civilians who start a revolution. That's what they were. Uh -huh. The guy who started this shit back in 1917 is a guy named Lev Bronstein, who was Ukrainian, and he went to New York, and he got the backing of a bunch of bankers who gave him all of the money to go start the Russian Revolution, and that's where they killed the Tsar and executed the whole family. And you know Lev Bronstein as? Lenin. Leon Trotsky. Oh, it's Trotsky? Leon Trotsky. I thought Lenin was the first one. That, no, uh... Lenin was later. Okay. And Trotsky was the one who got the revolution started, got the money from the bankers in New York, and got everybody killed. These guys were not intellectuals. They were normal Joes who were willing to do what these bankers in other parts of the world wanted them to do because the czar of Russia was in the way of them putting in banks in Russia and making more money. So you're saying useful idiots? Is that what you're... Maybe. Yeah. 
I feel like I might be. Roundabout way, you're explaining what uh, we have going on here with our youth, a bunch of useful idiots. I feel that might be the case. Yes. I feel that might be the case. Uh, anyway, those useful idiots purged all of the Russian government, creating the Soviet Politburo and creating the Soviet. They hadn't gotten to the military yet. They wouldn't get to the military until 1940, 1941, like we're seeing right here. But when you have a bunch of guys who were basically a bunch of kids who through a revolution that accidentally worked somehow and they start making decisions for the military. They don't know how to make that. No, they don't. Yeah. Absolutely. And, yeah. It was, and, and Jimmy, I love you. This is nothing personal, but it would be like me putting you in charge of the task force that I was with when we were in North Africa. That'd be yeah. a problem. That'd be, <laughs> that'd be a problem. I, I, be... I love you, man, but I just don't think you're up to it right now. Uh, no, I could get you there. I could get you there. But, but give, I mean, during give, the give me two, three years, and I might be able to get there. But, yeah. but you know, during the the purge, the, the during the Soviet area, they got rid of what forty percent of their officers were imprisoned or just flat, straight up executed. Yes, and fifteen years later, the Chinese would do the same thing. They killed anybody uh -huh. who was an intellectual threat to them, and purged anybody who was an intellectual threat to them, and that's what. The whole purpose of these purges were to, was to get rid of the threats. That's what's been done in our Pentagon to circle this back around to the original point. Anybody who posed a threat, ergo any patriot with half a brain, gone. has been removed. They're gone. You have nothing but yes men in there. The whole, the military is going to save us. They'll turn on the government and everything. No. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sad to report that that is no longer the case. Uh, maybe in some of the special operations units, some of those guys will either walk away or fight for us. Well, if it get, if it turns into a overt two way rifle range, I do not think we are going to see a hundred percent of the military and a hundred percent of the country's police force. You know, you know, basically fight for the other side. You're going to get an even split. You know, sixty forty fifty fifty. And the way it looks, they just don't have the numbers. Yep. Well, if the you, numbers. Yeah, we if talked you, about if, this at the beginning of the show. Go ahead, Jimmy. Yep. Um, like you said, Papa, you know, if you can't feed your family, you can't mm -hmm. fill your car with gas, you can't pay your bills. If a paycheck stops just right out, is that same person still going to support the people that were writing their those checks before? Or are they actually going to side with the people saying, hey, what the fuck you're doing is wrong. We're telling you what you're doing is wrong. And you better fucking pull your head out of your ass before we shove something else up there. And you're never going to get it back. Well, historically speaking, that's what happens. And that's that's when things come around to the two-way rifle range. We don't want that to happen. We're going to stay correct. out of it. We're going to do what we need to do to survive and Listen, stay out of it. We're just talking about historically, that's what happens. Yeah. This is nothing new. Yep. All right. And the same, I'm pointing out the fact that we're seeing the same pattern in this century as we saw in the 20th century. Yes. All right. We're just going to have with, different. With a lot of the same actors. Well, we're going to have slightly different actors. Yep. All right. And. But the, like, for instance, the purge that took place in the Russian military we're seeing the exact same thing happen here. It's just not as bloody yet. Yep. Now, yes. here's something that's happening out of order. Ten years prior to the Russian purge, the Bolsheviks created a famine in Ukraine and parts of Russia. And, and part of Poland. And part of Poland. Yep. Part of the goal was to get rid of excess mouths. And they basically decimated all of the farming and everything. And lo and behold, what's going on out there? I know some of you guys are watching this stuff on the internet. It's not being broadcast on the news at all, but you got the German farmers, yep. the, the Netherlands farmers, the French farmers. Mm -hmm. They're and all part, and in England and England now too, huh? I hadn't seen the English one. Well, it's not as big, but we had it going on in Canada. The, the Canada trucker thing. Yeah. But it's come here to America now. They're going to go after our farms. And you'll say, oh, this can't happen in America. We've been saying that for decades. Guess what? It's here. 
We're going to see it. They're going to try to go after the farms. They're going to try to shut farming down. They're going to try to starve as many people as they can. They're going to do this. This is not an if. This is not a hypothesis. They're already starting the processes to do these things. That's what farming control is all about. Correct. Where yep. I was born in a part of uh, Michigan, north of Detroit, about an hour called Shelby. When I was a boy, it was all dairy farms. Yep. There are zero dairy farms there now. They're all controlled by big conglomerates like Monsanto and above. Bear yep. just bought Monsanto. Great. Oh, goody. So there's that. But they're taking control of it in industrial farms. And if they have control of all the food and they've got control of all the distribution of the food, what happens? You starve. That's and right. that's why they're raiding like the Amish guy in Pennsylvania. Yeah. The Amish have been living that way for 240 years yeah. in the United States. I went and looked up the, the, the years that the Amish have been doing this stuff. 240 years. Well, they've either been committing crimes for 240 years or you have a nefarious agenda. I, I would I'd be going well from what I've seen. Our government is off the rails, in my opinion. It's not no. our government at all anymore. No, in my opinion. Well, when, right. when there is one man that owns more farmland than anyone else combined, and a pop quiz, can anyone guess who that is? Not Bill Gates. What? Yeah. Yeah, totally not him. Yeah, he's totally not uh, buying up farmland and ranch land and cattle land and all this other land that is used for producing food. But yet he's also investing heavily into lab-grown meat. That's totally not going to give you cancer or anything uh, like well, that. First totally of all, that, lab, that lab-grown meat is actual cancer cells from yes. what I've seen. Mm -hmm. it, no, thank you. Here's the thing that nobody ever bothers to ask the question for. If meat is so damn bad for you, why do they keep trying to make artificial things that taste like meat? I know. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, I, I love to eat meat. I love meat. Especially if it used to have a mother, mother preferably killed with a bat. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I am about to buy another quarter cow here. You want to go in on a quarter cow? I, well, I, if I had the, the storage space, of course, but I don't. Get a small deep freezer. They're like 99 bucks. Okay. I'll figure it out. Jimmy, if you were closer, I'd bring you in on the cow too, bro. I got gotcha. you. Oh, I've got a, uh, well, the. Uh... You're in Nebraska. You don't have any problem getting cow. What the hell am right, I talking so about? Let's roll through some of these fucking. Uh, some more of these. I want to talk about the Holodomor real quick. That's the okay. Ukrainian famine. It's not taught in schools. Everybody knows about the Holocaust. I'm not making a controversial statement here. It's a fact. Everybody learns about the Holocaust in school. Mm -hmm. It's just true. Nobody learns about the Holodomor, the Ukrainian famine. 3.9 million is the small estimate, and that's 13% of the population. The real number, they believe, is somewhere close to 40 million at the end. This went on for years. Yep. This These starvations went on for years. Unlike any other famines in history caused by blight or drought, this was caused when a dictator wanted to replace both the Ukraine's small farms with state-run collectives, which is exactly what's going on in the United States right now. Wow. Verbatim, replace small family farms with state-run collectives and punish independence-minded Ukrainians, independence-minded Americans. Hmm. I'm seeing a pattern. Yep. Hmm. We've already this this has already played out once in the 1900s. Who posed a threat to his totalitarian authority? Mm -hmm. Yep. History doesn't repeat itself so much as it rhymes. I was just about ready to make that point. The Ukrainian famine was a clear case of a man-made famine. Now we don't need to go through the entire history of the Holodomor. We will beat that thing to death. But yeah. we are going to do is jump forward a little bit further in time to 1939 1940 and this is related because it was happening in the in-between period between that holodomor and the russian purge purges it's the russo finnish war and pop likes this one uh, and listen first of all they went in russia went into finland thinking that they're going to steamroll them they had the tanks they had the armor they had fucking cannons the whole deal and the Finnish were not having any of it and made them pay dearly for every fucking mile that they took. And it literally set the stage for the rest of Europe to go, hey, Russia's pretty weak. Just a few years later, Operation Barbarossa kicks off. The purge had taken place. And Hitler was like, they're 
they lost a boatload of troops and material in the Russia Finnish war, and they destroyed 40% of their leadership and their military. Let's go in there and, and clean house. Let's set some context here. Okay. The Finns were not some tiny, weak, little European nation. There's a lot of Finns in Michigan in the Upper Peninsula, and especially back at the turn of the 20th century, early 1900s. They worked in the logging camps because they were impervious to fucking cold. Or they went to Minnesota. Went to Minnesota, eh? Yeah. They were impervious to the cold weather and would work for like days on end in the logging camps, pulling logs that if you or I tried to pick one up right now, it would just kill us. I would die. It would, we would just die. I can't do it. These guys would pick these logs up and walk off. I've seen pictures of it. My great uncles, they all worked in the sawmills, and all they talked about were the fins in the logging camps and their axe throwing contests, the big double-bit McCulloch axes for yep. taking trees down. And those blades are 10 inches wide. Man. And they're razor That's sharp. A, and razor sharp. And my uncles would tell us about the fins and how they were just like maniac loggers. But in Finland itself, these guys are also all Olympic-level skiers by the age of like 10. Yeah, 10 or 12. It's their national hobby. It's just what they do. Also at the time, most Finns got their meat during the winter by hunting. Yep. So they were all very skilled, quiet, skiing, sharpshooters in the mountains. What could go wrong? It's basically they bred themselves into an effective special forces sniper section. Correct. And the Russians didn't know the land, didn't know how to operate in the terrain, didn't understand the different types of snow, because if you live somewhere here, here like Michigan, we got different types of snow. Yeah. You'll get a layer of cake, which is the wet packy snow, and then a layer of two inches of ice on top of that. And then you and get if the you powder. step on it wrong, you get the powder on top of all of that. And if you step on it wrong, you break your damn ankle. Or, or you're going horizontal. Yes. And you're testing. Or you're going to do the splits, and that's not pretty either. Yeah. Um. The Russians had no idea how to operate in the Finnish territories, especially in the winter. And there is a legend of a Finnish sniper. Uh, 500 that was guys. Vikonen or something? I don't like remember that. his name, but he got uh, like 500. He got like 500, yeah. With a bolt action 6.5 uh, right, uh, Mauser rifle, I, or was it a Mosin uh, Nagant? I'm trying to I remember. I believe it was, uh, I can't remember. It was either a, a Mosin or a Carcano. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. One of the two. I can't remember which one it was, but yeah. I know I know the I know the story they were talking about. And then I'm gonna grab this one out of the chat though, because this one is salient to the point. Delvanus Tirv says the biathlon was inspired by Finns after the Winter War. That is correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's where that comes from. So the Russians went in there up against a force that nobody had ever tried to take on before, not knowing that the Finns had been doing this since oh, the Viking times. Correct. The Vikings tried to invade the Finns and got their asses handed to them. So this perception that the Russians were weak, while not entirely wrong, was not quite as accurate as portrayed because the force they went up against was really skilled. I, I understand what you're saying. But in when the, it was released on the, the world stage... Perception is not sense of reality. Yeah, perception is more... And it, the perception was Russian army was weak, and the Germans took advantage of that. We're seeing the same thing now, except I'm predicting at some point China is going to stab Russia in the back, and it'll be a huge clusterfuck. Yeah, he, you know, Steve doesn't agree with me, but that is what I'm seeing. Uh, because listen, China's economy is circling the drain. It's tanked. It's done. All right, they they need an economic kick. Mm -hmm. All right, they could try to take Taiwan, but let's face it. They got to cross water. They got to do an invasion. And then there's and, world stage backlash. And there's world, yeah, there's world stage backlash. And in Japan and some of those other, other countries in the area will yeah. fire missiles at the Chinese. Japan has yeah. transitioned to offensive operations. Correct. It's, it's first time yeah. since 1945. So, I, and my, this is just a prediction. My prediction is China's like, you know what? We need to get. We need to do something. So why don't we just attack Russia? They're weak. And. If that happens, there's going to be some exchanges of some big kapowies, and it could quite go global. Now, I'm this. This is the part that really scares the shit out of me. Is if India and China, you know, ally and become one cohesive force, 
there's literally nothing we can do to stop them unless we use big kapowies. That's it. Uh, India and China have been butting heads for I don't know how many years. I understand. I, 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 understand, I understand that it basically nothing is nothing is off the table at this point. It's nope. fucking, look at all look at all the crazy shit going on. Nothing is like really off the table. And again, I'm not a you know mastermind uh, military strategist or anything like that. But strategery. <laughs> yeah, I, I, like I said, I, I I drink beer and I talk shit. So, okay, but, why we love you though? Yeah. Yep, yep, it's all good. But, so, I don't know. Okay, I, here's here's yeah. where we disagree, and I don't entirely disagree with Pop's premise. Um, the thing is, I know the Chinese order of battle and uh -huh. I know how their troops are trained and it's not very well. Well, they, they're still using an order of battle, which was given to them by the USSR. That's correct. That is correct. Now, for an example, when they crossed the Yalu liver, the, the Yalu liver, that sounds like a, a sick jaundiced jaundiced uh, slot C heavy right. drinking yes the yalu river in korea during the north korean war in the offensive of 1951 they had 34 divisions when they wow. came across the sheer numbers shocked the american troops at first until they realized that the chinese only one guy out of about every 20 had a weapon. And as a guy with a weapon was shot, the others would scramble to pick up his weapon and keep going. Yep. They were poorly trained. They were disorganized. They had no formations. They had no strategy. It was just wall of man. Yeah. The, oh, yeah. And that is how they fought that portion of the battle. And I heard this story from, again, General Peck, the, the general that I met. He, he briefed my unit on the whole thing. So he was like there when this happened. He said the wall of humanity was unbelievable and shocked us all. But then we suddenly realized that only a small handful of them had rifles at all. Yeah. So what we did, and this is the general talking, is roll our vehicles forward that had machine guns and yeah. just start yeah. <laughs> mowing them down. When I, when I graduated from the Q course, there was a guy in my class whose father had fought in the Korean War, and we went out to get a steak dinner, and that dude told some fucking scary fucking war stories oh, from yeah. Korea. Like, we're talking, uh, one of his buddies literally, because they were... They spent like a day and a half firing machine guns into a marching wall of meat that went all the way from 10 meters away from the wire back to about a half a mile. And it went back and forth for yes. a day and a and half. They just kept coming. And when it got close, this one guy would literally take two E tools, run and go over the triple con concertina wire and just go full Conan on these guys. He eventually got killed. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I mean, that is so fucking barbaric and just thinking about that firing a 1919 a6 machine gun into a marching wall of meat for a day and a half and literally when when the barrel got too hot they literally took it away put another one in this you had to keep fucking firing. Get the oven mitts yeah get the oven mitts yeah, that was and that's true, and it really goes to demonstrate what I've mentioned a bunch of times about different countries, different mindsets. They literally do not think like us. No, they don't. They masked and walked right into fire and thought nothing of it. So here's where I disagree slightly with Pop. I think China might try something, but I think we'll end up looking at the mouse that raped the elephant. Okay. I don't think it will be effective. It'll be a thorn in Russia's side. It'll bleed a shit ton of their resources. Uh -huh. But at the end of the day, I don't think China stands a chance there because I know their order of battle uh -huh. and they're inept. Well, plus they both have Kapowies. They do both have Kapowies. Nobody wants to use a Kapowie. Yeah, but listen, if one of those countries is looking really bad, they're going to pull out a Kapowie and it's going to get nasty. 
Yeah, yeah, you can you can argue that all day long, but then your kapawi goes off, and you've got an area you can't walk into. But then what happens after that? I know it's bad. If you can't hold ground, you can't win a war. No, we you're right. Know that it's yeah. a clusterfuck. Yes, and you know I have I have no answers for that kind of stupidity, but that could quite literally happen. Oh God, yes. Oh yeah. Somebody stupid hits a button. Yeah, that's all it takes. And then. Uh, to the to those in the chats, um, you know, again, I'm not the the military guy. Kapowies are, uh, well, let's just say, uh, big bombs. Let's yeah. call it a thermonuclear weapon. Let's rip that band aid right the yeah. fuck off. You're right. Call yeah. it what it is. But I, I like to refer to it as a kapowie. Kapowie. Yeah. <laughs> kapuya. Kapuya. It's the one thing that Boop. that anybody who spent any time in the military and has been on the ground anywhere, and in, in the movies, they're like, oh, let's nuke them from orbit, dude. You don't need that. I have seen one blue 84 go off. Yeah. Okay. I, exactly I, one. I, I, in the Q course, we actually had a class on the man pack nuke. And I'm going to tell you right now, that is so fucking stupid. What's the point of that though? Uh, it can't produce that big of a, what's it got a blast radius of a quarter it, mile? It, well, it's the equivalent of that Davy Crockett tactical nuke. It's not that big. There's no it, point. But it, it, you have to fucking carry it in on your back, right? Right. Then you yeah. put it in a strategic strategic location, set the timer. Hillary's ass, okay. And, and then try to get away. I mean, fuck that. Wait, did, uh, did, try did, to did, get away. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> I'm not did, doing that. Did someone say Hillary? <laughs> Oh, the brutality. Oh, the humanity. We fucking hate our. Oh, my God. I had to do that. You guys get a little too serious. I had to break up in the night. Uh, that's, that's fair. Right. That's, that's fair. Right. That's fair. Yeah. That's that's it. That. Nope. Hit it. Tonight's a serious night, guys. So. And, and look, and look, China is just doubling down on the size of their military. Okay. So, with that as well. Uh, one of the things that we saw with the North Koreans is they were constantly trotting out new equipment and new stockpiles and knew this and knew that. Some of the intelligence we got out of North yeah, Korea yeah. may or may not have indicated that a lot of that was um, what was the name of the operation alongside of Overlord? Mm. That was one where they did somebody they... in the chat. Tell me what Overlord was. Yeah, it they uh main it was a psyop to fool the Germans thinking there was another army somewhere else. Calais. Yeah. Further up the coast in yeah. Calais. And they put Patton in charge of it because he was in the doghouse at the time. They had yes, D Day was Normandy. Yeah. Um they had a whole operation, a ghost army of all of these really realistic looking from the air replicas to make it look like the evasion point was going to be at Calais instead of Normandy. And from the intelligence we got out of North Korea, the North Korean military was mostly puppet show. Yeah. I would say there is a better than average chance that China is exaggerating the size of its equipment by as much of a, as a third. I know, but I still don't want to test it. I don't want to test it either. I'm just saying these reports, I've seen reports that contradict this stuff. Yeah in the past in an alternate dimension well i i have been keeping up to speed on the the uh what the aircraft carrier that china's building which is a shit show it's not going to work they have a lot of their aircraft that are supposed to rival ours but they're, they're a shit show but the, here's the thing it's just a matter of time especially if we keep sending our industry over to china to get cheap products that they will just have all of the fucking ability, the secrets, everything to build our weapons and use them against us. We need to stop this. You know, I'm so sick of fucking sending our money and our fucking business over to fucking China and or even that whole area. Uh, it, it's fucking, it needs to come to an end. We need to bring that industry back here. That way, if worse comes to worse, we can provide for our fucking selves. Yep. Yeah, it's not it's, like it's not like the uh, the majority of our pharmaceuticals are made over in China or anything. China and in India, 
Yeah. China and that India. Is My wife sold stupid. pharma for years and years. There's very little she doesn't know about that. We'll have to have her on a, for a Q&A. We'll have to bring her on for a Q&A on pharma one night. All right. She really does know all of that stuff like crazy. She, she still remember it? After? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah. She's got oh, yeah, one of those good. weird memories. Uh, China could field ostensibly about 1.5 million guys realistically. Okay. But their basic training, their rifles are tied into the positions. They can't left and right. Wow. They don't get to maneuver with live ammo unless they end up in like the Chinese airborne or special operations units. Their regular infantry never fires more than 10 rounds in basic training. Wow. They only get to fire 10 live rounds. Wow. And all of these simulators and AI stuff that's coming out now, they're using that because the troops can't turn around with an actual weapon and shoot the instructors. Ah. I don't know, man. Uh, my thing is this. From watching Russia and the Ukraine have it out, I am thoroughly unimpressed with how Russia is conducting operations. That's number one. Yeah, it's fair. China was basically given equipment and the doctrines from the USSR. So I don't have a lot of uh, confidence that China will be able to wage war effectively in the beginning because it is war is a huge learning curve so uh you know who knows what's going to happen all i can tell you is from what i'm seeing we are literally recycling the same script from the 1900s in the 21st century we are absolutely recycling the same script um one of the big things for any of these armies ukraine russia china is sustained the ability to sustain over operations over a period of time. And you and I both know from being in various theaters that sustainment is not an easy task. And that's probably one of the hardest if you're going to fight a protracted battle. Well, uh, that's one of our strengths, though. Yes, it is. It's a big U.S. strength. We're extremely good at projecting force and then maintaining it in a spot. Correct. We, we possess the potential. We haven't been allowed to do that in some time. Can you imagine what we could have done in the Iraq Afghanistan theater of operations if they would have just said make it end do whatever you have to do 3 months tops yeah it it would be a bloodbath there'd be a lot of smoking cities a lot of dead people cemeteries everywhere but it would not have lasted 20 the, fucking years um The one element in Afghanistan that I had contact with a bunch of our MI guys, a bunch of guys that I worked with, uh, they came back. Uh, we all went to one of the schools in Arizona and uh, we we're sitting around the fire one night smoking and joking. And they're like, we got this great story, man. This is funny as hell. Uh, there was a village that had some commander that the, the higher ups wanted, that core level wanted. And the only unit in the area was an element of Ranger. I don't know which one it was. It mm -hmm. was this would have been Afghanistan 2002, early 2002. It was either uh, first or third bat. Okay. Uh, the only element in the area was whichever bat that was. It was a Ranger bat. And the Corps commander said, I want intelligence from this village. The Ranger said, okay, what are our rules of engagement? Well, if they shoot, shoot back. Well, there you go. That's a really dumb thing to tell a ranger battalion because they go into this village and they go to get the intelligence. And of course, the Afghanis shoot. It's a, and the rangers fired back. And that's it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Basically leveled the village. Yeah. And the commander at core level is like, what are you doing? You told us to shoot back. That's right. And our guys are sitting around the fire pit just laughing. He said they'd never seen anything like it. The Rangers just systematically leveled this entire village and came back with like a hard drive with a bullet hole in it. <laughs> Some half burnt papers. <laughs> Fingerprints off of a bunch of dead guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got your intel. Well, listen, I've said this for, you know, since the beginning, since I started this show. If you are so unfortunate as to wake up one morning and have an entire battalion of airborne rangers in your country. Oh, you're done. You you're, you need to prepare to draw a red line through an entire division 
because that's what it will take to take care of those guys. Uh, that is just how vicious and well supplied the airborne rangers are and well prepared. Yes. They they are the premier infantry force. Yeah, and I, I was honored to be there. I was there for two and a half years, yeah. and when I left, I was done. Yeah, because you, you it, it's very stressful. It's hard on your mind and body, and even your spirit, to maintain that level of preparedness. From what I gathered, an old NCO in the Rangers is like six years. Yes, six or eight years. That's a, that's a hump. Yep. For for Rangers. Yeah, but uh, I worked alongside of those guys in a couple of different environments, and uh, like I've reiterated, like I've said before, I was never in any of the combat stuff, but I was alongside of the guys doing that shit. They were so squared away; they were just really, really competent, really knew what they were doing, and uh, they would actually listen to us. Mm. They would listen to the intel guys. Well, I mean, you should listen to the intel yeah. guys because it's intel. The infantry division commanders did not want to listen to us. Yeah. Well, they didn't, didn't shock me. Yeah. They didn't care how many of their guys got chewed up. No, in when, when I was in Iraq with my uh, you know, Lurs company, I made arrangements to get current on time intel dumps from a E4 that worked at the 202 MI, you know, battalion. And she liked to bang one of my troops. No. Oh. And I'm like, hey, look. I, I can't have you hanging out here banging somebody. You gotta make it you gotta make it look right. So come here with a CD, give a fucking briefing about the current intel, and then I'll look the other way for everything else. I hear a little bit of R and R there. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, towards the end, she got she was killed in action by a roadside bomb. Son of a bitch. And uh she was one of those one she spoke like four or five languages. Oh, she was one of us. Last She's name Gazowitz. Yeah. She was Top, she was a top notch uh, NCO man, and uh, it just sucked that she got whacked. I, wow. I, she was one of our favorites, you know, not because you know one guy was banging her, but because she was fucking cool as shit. <laughs> <laughs> what are you to do? Um, so this article on China, like I was saying, I think a lot of their stuff is smoke and mirrors. They have, they can manufacture arms, ammunition, all of that stuff. But to be able to deliver it in a timely manner, in a sustainable fashion, I don't think they've got the wherewithal. China has never, in all of this time, projected any real military force outside of China. They had a couple of elements in Iraq. I would say they they've tried got during some... Vietnam and Korea. The, Korea? Yeah, that's about the last one. What What do they have in, in Vietnam? I never heard of any Chinese units in Vietnam. The Koreans were in Vietnam, and they were terror. Well, it, it was rumored that there were some uh, Chinese pilots and Russian pilots, you know, flying. That's a handful of pilots. Yeah, I'm talking yeah. about a projection of force. I'm talking about a division level. No, no, you're right. They just send force. a lot of their equipment over to Vietnam. Yeah. Yeah. They right. do that all the time. Yeah, yeah. They send their guys into battle zones. They send their guys into war zones to learn. That's smart. Mm -hmm. We do that all the time. That's the, that's how we kind of got started with all of that. Stuff. They're called advisors. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 1964. What? Uh, advisors. Advisors. But, I, I, uh, I have been the advisor myself. So. Yeah. Uh, I've been on an advisory team. Um, I was the guy with all the boxes of equipment. <laughs> <laughs> Come over here. I'll show you how to get this antenna up. <laughs> um, push this button. All right. So. China has never projected force in any real meaningful manner outside of its borders since the Korean War. And Korea arguably isn't really outside of China's borders because up until around 1817, China controlled most of that anyway. Yes, they did. Then in 1849, Japan took it over. Yeah. So that that's a long standing thing that's been going on for hundreds. But here's years. the thing though is if there's a long projected war, China will learn those lessons and then it'll, they'll be even harder to defeat. If their communist government stays the same and the same sort of people stay in power, the communist leaders, the we'll Politburo will not allow generals who learn to remain in power. They can't. Yeah. They have to either so, retire them happily or retire them. Or they just retire. 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 <laughs> Where is he? Uh, dirt nap retirement. Dirt nap retirement. Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah, I understand what that is. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next one. We're almost at super we chat time. We are uh, pushing that super chat time. So why is all of this occurring with China pushing into Russia? One of the things we've got in, we mentioned it earlier, is China's economy is a bubble. They have whole cities that are empty. There are three or four cities that I am aware of and one of those that are one of those cities had been torn down and rebuilt a couple times that that's the rumor like literally hear that one but i believe it the buildings are so shitty they demo them and rebuild them but they don't get any better and they demo them again and that's an example of what i'm talking about when i say the chinese proletariat won't allow any smart people to exist they can't yeah you're right they have worker drones They'll take some of the smart ones in because they know they have to refresh their own ranks. Yeah. But in positions of leadership outside of that Politburo, they don't want anybody who could start another revolution. Yeah. Yep. You're either all the way in or, or yeah. all the way out. There you go. Exactly. So they've got this huge housing bubble going on in China and everything is starting to fail. Their brilliant economy and I've seen this. My daughter goes to state. There are Chinese. They're driving Bugattis <laughs> and things like that. Real seriously wealthy people that are uh, there's a handful of them, but the rest of China is basically starving. Them. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, you have the the uh, PR fancy cities or the city centers, mm -hmm. and the rest of it is just a fucking crumbling shithole. Yeah. That's absolutely correct. Shanghai, Nanking, and Beijing, I think, are their three trophy cities. Yeah. Where they allow foreigners to go and see everything. Now, one of the other things is you've got a lot of Chinese coming over here lately. You don't leave China without the permission of the Chinese Communist Party. So all of those guys are operatives. Every one of them. Yep. At a minimum, they have a contact within <clears throat> the CCP yep. that they send information to whenever they're told to. Yeah. There's See, and no uh, that uh, that famous video that went viral of the uh, the Chinese guys standing at parade rest at the CBP detention or whatever. Yeah, I made the, I made the joke that says, you know what, the armor of America is already, uh, you know, it's already weak enough. Uh, we don't need any more chinks in the armor. <laughs> He was so, waiting to deliver that. Well played. Sir. Well played. Well, I was waiting for that. Yeah, uh, Twitter didn't like that joke. They uh, they they muted that comment and like, yeah, yeah free good. speech, my ass. That's a good fucking joke. That's a funny joke. That is objectively a funny joke. Racist no, jokes no. are funny. I don't care who you are. They're funny. Mara, huh? oh, that's funny. Yeah, they are. I I have I have a bunch of racist jokes. Yeah, so do let's, I. Let's, 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 let's <laughs> we'll cut do that, that to a minimum. Not, not right now. Not the stream for the. Not the stream for those though. Not the stream for that. Phrasing. Yes, but you know, I mean, okay. The the World Bank, which measures all of this stuff, um, cut China's gross domestic domestic product forecast to four point four from four point eight. Uh, on Sunday, this was two weeks ago, citing persistent domestic difficulties such as elevated debt, property weakness, and an aging population. Hmm. So China's economy is basically uh, paper a tiger. hollow shell. It's a paper tiger. It's really not anywhere near as big as it's being laid and, out. And a lot of uh, industry is pulling their shit out of China from what I've been reading. Yes. Yeah, they're starting to. So we can only hope. Yeah, they're starting to. Um, it's It will be something else if China collapses. That will be a sight to behold. But I want to point out something here where it says aging population and dwindling numbers. So throughout history, populations ebb and flow. They do. Mm -hmm. the, here in the United States, they're saying, oh, well, we're not having enough children. We have to import all these illegal aliens that are killing everybody and bringing measles and everything you hear about the measles outbreak at the airport that's i did yes. look that up yeah um <clears throat> you don't require x number of population for an economy what you require is a population that is productive mm -hmm. and educated and in the trades and everything else 
that's what you require. The, the population of the United States has basically remained static since about 1970. Mm -hmm. What's happening and the general population, the United States in 1969 was approximately 90.2% white. Mm -hmm. It just was. Yep. We're still at that white population. It just hasn't grown. What's happened is they're piling third worlders on top of us. So it looks like our population is dropping. It's not. It's static. Okay. It's just, it just hasn't moved. And they're piling more and more freaking South Americans and Africans and Chinese and Indians on top of us. Yeah. So it looks like our numbers are dropping like a rock. I went back and looked because the uh, the guy from the uh, ACLU and the one from the ADL, uh, ADL and then from the Southern Poverty Law Center, they all have a calendar. They're keeping track of, oh, look at the original population of America, the white population of America dropped like a rock. And I looked into it, and it hasn't moved. It's the same since the early 70s from around 69 to 71 yep we're just having more population piled on us yep it, it's totally not like the uh, the great replacement is a uh, a myth or anything oh yeah, totally yeah. Not. No. 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 no that's took, a whole other the show took that off of their servers yeah we need to actually do a show on that one Oh, I'd be happy to. Oh, that one. Now, now this is like, the one that scares it. the shit out of me. Cause... So with all that shit going on in China and their elderly population and their economy going down, well, they need to deal with their competition. We're more competition than enemies. Let's get that straight. For now. For the moment. But Chinese scientists create a mutant coronavirus strain that attacks the brain and has a 100% kill rate in mice as they admit there's a risk it spills over to humans. humans yep why in the fuck are we allowing this shit to happen uh, because what the Laxo Klein and pfizer are probably funding it yeah listen to be completely I, honest yeah. um if if they cook up some shit that starts killing off a bunch of people uh it it won't be just the americans but the whole world will wipe that country off the face of the planet yeah i i i would I would be very hesitant, but I would agree with the uh, the Raccoon City kind of uh, cleansing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm good with that now. I yeah. find myself strangely comfortable with that, which is a line from Boondock. A, a, cu a couple, a couple hundred thousand, maybe million people, or seven to eight billion people on this entire planet. Yeah, this is this, they've already fucked this up, and we had the first coronavirus bullshit. Now, Which, don't uh, get me wrong; that was just like a supercharged cold. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. And uh, China still has not uh, paid reparations or admitted fault or repaid the entire world for any of that shit. Yep. Just saying. Well, we'll see what happens. So, with this particular one. Uh, I'm going to push back against this headline a little bit, having had the chemical warfare classes, and I know you've had them. Oh, yeah. You're a freaking 18. Bravo, for Christ's sake. Uh, chemical weapons are not quite as effective as one would think. It's not it, like in the movies where if you go near one, ah, and you instantly die. No. That's not how it works. You suffer, yeah. and it sucks, and you get blisters, and your lungs are going to be scarred, and half your face might melt. Yeah, it, it's if, not if like res, it's crushed. not like Resident Evil where and, the gas hits the ground in in two minutes you're a zombie. And the NBC equipment you have, it's not designed to actually save your life. It's just it's designed, designed to get to you out of the it. area and hopefully get you to treatment or yep. prolong your life long enough for you to be useful. And then you report in and tell them what happened and then die. Yeah. Anyway, there is no such thing as a chemical weapon with a 100 percent kill rate. You would require a controlled environment. You could get a 100% kill rate, for example, if you threw it into somewhere like a, a shower school auditorium. With a bunch of people in it? Yeah. Yeah. Or a school auditorium, something like that. Somewhere where it's contained and you got a bunch of people. Yep. But out in a general population on sidewalks and stuff like that, or even a shopping mall, there's no such thing as a 100% kill rate with a chemical weapon. We know this okay. because the idiots who released Sabrin gas in the subways in Tokyo, remember? Yeah, I remember that. Only one or two people died during that attack. There were a lot of people who got fucked up. Yeah. Oh, shit. A lot of people got messed up. Sabrin's bad news. Uh, yeah, well, it short circuits your nervous system. Correct. Yeah, it's a nerve agent. I'd rather be dead. 
I would rather be dead. Yes. But still applies. Chemical weapon used in a closed environment like a subway still did not achieve a 100% kill rate. I know, but it still scares the shit out of me. It yeah, does. It scares it, me enough that we're just going to shift to the other side of the world. What were you saying, Jimmy? Yeah, I was going to say, it, it still scares me enough to say, why in the fuck are they still trying to dick around with viruses and change these and all this and that? Man wow. should never even think about trying to play God. And then even does it, even when it comes down to the bi- micro, the, the smallest fucking particle, man Why should are not we doing this pop. What are we? We're evil hairless monkeys. Yeah, thank you. Uh, oh yeah, that that that's great. That's why. I mean, we're, right. we're, listen, uh, we can build a satellite that can see the edge of the universe, but I have to have a sticker on a gas pump that says "Don't put nozzle in your ass or mouth." I mean, come on, we're fucking stupid. Yeah, do not put tire air hose in your ass. Yes. <laughs> Remove all warning labels from every single object and let yes. Darwin take effect. Oh my God! Yes, I'm one hundred percent. I'm so sick and tired of these warning labels. They 100%. just gotta let the dumb people die. Yeah. So, uh, Iran says that the Revolutionary Guards attack Israel's spy headquarters in Iraq and vow more revenge. So, we all know that the Mossad and Israel do a lot of spying and it stands to reason that they would have intelligence assets in Iraq. Apparently Iran found one of these guys and he was also a businessman, but he was a Mossad agent as well. Oh no, no, really? No. Wow. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Mossad God? agents? Yeah, I, wonder if there's any con- I wonder if there's any connection to Epstein. Uh-huh. Mm. So he, could be. Iran- sent him a salvo of high velocity explosive suppositories okay and blew his ass up fair enough and now uh the islamic state is claiming responsibility in iran and the israelis are of course vowing revenge in response to the recent atrocities of the zionist regime causing the killing of commanders of the guards and axis of resistance one of the main Mossad espionage headquarters in iraq's kurdistan region was destroyed with ballistic missiles Ballistic missiles to get one guy. I appreciate. I applaud the effort. I a golf clap. I applaud the effort. Though. Overkill, but yes. Can we say overkill? Yes. I think? Yeah. Uh, in addition to the strikes at the northeast of Kurdistan's capital, capital Erbil, in a residential area and near a U.S. consulate, the guards said they fired a number of ballistic missiles in Syria to destroy perpetrators of terrorist operations. So, what is going to result from this? More shooty shoots. Then? More shooty shoots. Yeah. The Israelis are not going to take it lying down. Well, they're already in a war footing. Yes. So like, all right, fuck it. We're already mobilized. That's it. Yeah. And uh, it is going to get, uh, I have to point out this one line here, advertisement, scroll to continue. I don't know what the point of that is. All right. Well, let's make an announcement here. If you're watching on (sighs) YouTube and Rumble, please give us the likes. I mean, I'm looking here on Rumble. There's what? Very you know, ten likes. I mean, what the fuck? We got almost a thousand people. Watching. I got a hundred likes. I'm hundred twenty nine likes. Uh, right, we got nine hundred and sixty people watching. I got hundred and twenty nine likes. I mean, come on, raise that up here. Pump our numbers, guys. All you got to do is hit the thumb. Yeah, come yep. on. I, I was just about ready to say. I just did a refresh. We got nine hundred and sixty eight on Rumble. One hundred twenty nine. What the fuck? Come I know on, you guys are fucking up by the numbers, man. Wow. Uh, and I should not have uh, refreshed the chat because I lost the. Super chats that were coming in through there. Let me uh, chats that were coming. I'll tell you what, I I'm gonna need you guys to to just to hit that like thumb. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> I fucking hate that one, man. I fucking hate it. I know, I know I saw fucking that we had a cup, we had a few uh super chats in there on Rumba here. Let me see if I can try to unfuck the situation here. All right, so I, hey, I we're already we uh, it's 9 40. Let's start going through some super chats okay. on YouTube. Okay, yeah, damn it. Uh, Steve, you might have to scroll back through the uh, the Rumble chat to uh, get those because I hit the refresh button by mistake. Apologies for that, gentlemen. Oh, apologies for that one. Um, so that was a fuck. That was a fuck. That was a fuck up on my end. But uh, what's the chat here? I gotta, I gotta find where the first. Uh, how do you? Can you sort the super chats? 
Uh, Rumble, you can't. You just got to scroll up through them. Scroll up and find them. What a pain in my urethra. <laughs> it is. The uh, the Rumble chat is a pain in the dick. The, but uh, Rumble is... Burn. Syphilitic burn. Yep. Rumble is the uh, the place to go. If not, uh, yeah. If uh, taps, well, I'm are them. Your... I just want to make sure that I get all of them. I want to make sure here. I want to make sure here. Yep. Yeah, I I saw one from uh the first one was uh from Evil Zombie Toe. I believe that was a five dollar super chat. So if you can keep scrolling up through that and uh, catch uh, that I'm, one, I'm scrolling through the whole Rumble yeah. chat and I'm not seeing it. And there are super chats here. There's oh, a no. couple of them. They're not on. Yep. They're not showing up on my. Computer. Okay. Yep. But uh, we'll go ahead and uh, jump over to YouTube here. We've got a uh, Sean. YouTube's? Yep, we'll go through uh YouTube. Got Sean St. George here with four ninety nine. Says, uh, still think all officers should come from the lower enlisted. No commission without experience. That's absolutely correct. Absolutely yeah. correct. Yeah. Yep. A rumble evil zombie toe two dollars says uh carl marx was real name was moses mordecai levy carl bolshevism and communism have a common tie huh? unfortunately with the leadership he is correct and the facts just are what they are yep yep and we got a uh, advad dad over on a uh, youtube with the uh, 1499 australian uh we just had a referendum on a voice uh, indigenous uh, to parliament, parliament here in Australia. This quote unquote voice would have the power over parliament. I believe it was an attempt at a silent coup. Oh, in yeah. the good in the good way or the bad way? Because I've heard some things going on down in uh, going on down yeah. under Australia. that are not good. Oh yeah, it's bad. It's, it's fucked up. It's, it's not good. Uh, Gundai351 throws us $2 and says, Redon12, Gundai351, the sniper you speak of, I assume you are speaking of the Finnish sniper. Correct, yeah. Yes, that was, uh, do, 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 uh, let's see, that was, uh, uh Simo uh, Haya. Yeah, yeah. That's him. Yep, yep. He, no, uh, I, I know it. And he got shot in the face towards the end of the war. Yep. yep. And he, uh, ingested his, uh, unit's entire, uh, well, "Quote unquote methamphetamine uh, supply and went on quite the bender." Yep. <laughs> wow. Yeah. The uh, uh, if you haven't looked at it, uh, the fat electrician has a video on that. Be I'll sure to. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. That is that's that a good video. Channel. Yeah. Like, that guy is oh, awesome. Fat Mick electrician. Mando, big shout out to him. Uh, Mick Mando throws us a dollar and says, "Jimmy, for that killery doth should ingest a satchel of Richards." <laughs> <laughs> The satchel of Richards. <laughs> well, I would, but uh, well, I am not uh, the one that enjoys the shaft, good sir. I prefer, <laughs> I prefer the pit. Just the tip. <laughs> not even the tip. Oh my god. <laughs> Let's see. All right, uh, jumping over back here on uh, YouTube, we got uh, Demaster Twelve with two dollars. Uh, Millie looks like Chip Hazard on estrogen. <laughs> yeah, You're not yeah, wrong. that's not uh, incorrect. That's a good observation. I like that. That was a good one. A Renard 69 on Rumble says, power does not corrupt, power reveals. That is a true story. Power amplifies whatever virtues, flaws, and sins the one give power already possesses. I guarantee you those corrupted by power were already doing that shit before. I can give you a real world example. I served under Mike Hayden as in worked in the same building with him when I knew him. He gave every appearance of being a decent, upstanding man. The second he got his first star, he started to get weird. By the time he was the director of the NSA, they clearly had complete power over him. Correct. Let's see. Uh, Thumper, the sweaty fat guy. This is not a super chat, but uh, he's uh, in the chat here. says, uh, Jimmy, Simo was a was different diff crazy fin than the meth guy. <laughs> oh. Well, there you have it. There you have okay. it. Okay. So, uh, so Simo was the uh, the Finn with uh, oh, Simo was Simo was the Finn with the uh, the Mosin Nagant. Uh, there, yes. there's a there's a super chat and uh, the Odyssey that clears that up. There was a, okay. okay, okay, yeah. Go I'm, ahead. I'm make, mixing up my stories here. Sorry. Thank you, Thumper, for uh, clearing that up for me. Let's see, I uh, got a uh, Alex Patino over here on YouTube. Ten dollars says I'm disappointed with the direction our country took uh, messing with the army. I probably served as a 19 Delta Cavalry Scout, and I acknowledge the fact that 
Uh, the fact that the majority of us who volunteered were white and Hispanic. Yeah. Yep. That's a true story. Uh, you know what? We had some Navajo too. They like to do a lot of the stuff. Yeah, I had a Nav. I had a. Yep. Was he Navajo? We had one like full blooded Indian when I was in the bat- battalion. And we used to make him talk in Indian. <laughs> Thank like, you, well, hey, so it was just so really cool. It is a, it's a cool little piece of history. Yeah, it's really true. The Navajo cold talkers were really a thing, mm-hmm. and it stumped the shit out of everybody this, we went up against. So here, here's my controversial point, and a lot of people in the chats are probably going to give me shit for it, but I'm going to say this: Wind Talkers was a better World War II movie than Saving Private Ryan. I will agree with that statement. I will agree with that statement. Uh, Professor Blake Poo Ass Blaster <laughs> 3000 with the excellent name actually throws us two super chats. I'll just read them back to back because they're right up against each other. You got to remember that there are more citizens than the government. That is absolutely true. And the second statement is also absolutely true. Pop loves his jungle penetrator. Oh my God. <laughs> Get out of here with yeah. that. <laughs> What? Alex, I mean, there Alex, was. That was you, what do you want me to do? <laughs> uh, Alex Patino, who comes back on uh, YouTube, says, uh, even Stalin was afraid of intellectuals to include the generals that were competent. So he had purges that happened. That's yes, right. yeah. that is absolutely correct. Those guys are very paranoid. They're dead. And uh, I got another one here from uh, H12. Uh, I'm familiar with that name. Uh, sends in $2. Says email. Uh, I did mention you in the uh, the chat uh, to uh, send in uh, the email again because I'm not getting quite enough of the. Uh, I'm going to oh. be honest. Oh. There's been a couple. It's been going on for a while where people email us stuff and it never arrives on our end. Like I, I I've been trying uh, to get a guy to email in his uh, suicide story. And he's literally said he, he emailed it three times and it's it's never come yeah, through. Yeah, uh, in case in what, point. Um, you know what? We might need to move you off of Gmail. They might be censoring stuff now. Yeah, you're absolutely yeah, correct. Yeah, uh, ca- case we in point, a- um, oh. I did see, um, oh, who is it? Uh, let me, uh, I just want to jump over here to uh, Odyssey here because I know they're in here. Where's he at? Where's he at? God damn it. Uh, Airman, uh, senior Airman uh, Dick Fitzwell said, uh, new cards for you, bundle of twigs for a dollar. Yeah, I am not seeing that email, good sir. So, if you yeah, could it either send it again, um, if yeah. we have to, um, I will uh, I'll start saying, hey, send your shit, send stuff to my email. We'll, just in we'll case. get another, we'll get an email off of Gmail slash Google set up, yes, to get that out of there. Um. Yeah. yeah we are we are yeah. getting the uh, proverbial penis slap f- from uh, all sides. Yeah. Is, uh, not fun. Yeah. See. Uh. So. Uh. H twelve. If you are still in the chat, uh, if you can, send that email over again. I will keep my eye open. Again, it's a uh, redonkulous twelve at gmail dot com. Yeah, some, will, uh, and also some people yep. like if Blake isn't here, we might not be able to get into his email. Yeah. Those. That's true too. That's yeah. true yep. too. We have yeah, a so it, Proton mail this week. Uh Proton has run out of Switzerland and I is know. not gonna get censorified like this. It's a shame that uh, you know we have to do that because you know we have a constitution, we should not be able to get censored as much. And we're just getting fucked. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Sean St. George in the uh, the chat. I just happened to catch that. Uh, Proton might not be able to handle this kind of trap. Uh, this kind of traffic. Uh, I think they have a small space cap too. Yeah. Well, I'll have to look into. So it. You can pay for Proton Pro. I do. Yep. Okay. It's worth the. It's worth the nickel. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that'll it'll be something to look in towards. Look into in the future. Uh, again, uh, senior airman fit. Uh, fits well uh if you can send those cards again um h12 if you could send that uh email again uh just to uh, make sure and uh be sure to uh put your uh your tagline or your handle in the uh the 
in the topic there so that we know who who it's coming from who is sending it who's who so all right we'll jump back here into the super chats here got a alex patino back on youtube with ten dollars uh here's a finished badass then look up larry thorne yep yeah fucker you scrolled up on me uh, he fought the Russians when Finland ended its war. Then he joined the Waffen SS to continue fighting Russia. And in the fifties, he he joined the U.S. Army. I, I That's, read the story. Yeah. Yep. Wow. I actually, quite the history. Yeah. Yeah, I I actually remember watching that on a. It was YouTube. It was a simple history. Yeah. I believe that was the channel. Yeah, he was the uh, the the one guy to fight for like all three sides. That's crazy. Of the military on World that War II. That is a war love is so cracky right there. That, that, <laughs> yeah. That, that is a motherfucker you do not want to fuck with. My Doesn't favorite, matter. though, of all time is the British officer from the Highlanders who showed up on the beach at Normandy wearing his kilt and carrying a broadsword and a long and a longbow, longbow. Yeah. and actually yep. went into action with those. He got a couple <laughs> kills with the yep. longbow, too. Yes. Yep, I remember those. That All guy right. was. All bad. right, looks like we did get the Fitzwell cards. I'll have those ready and primed up here. We'll get through the super chats here on YouTube. We'll have uh, Steve go through the uh, Rumble chats. I have just uh, gone through the Rumble chats. We are through the super chats. Through them. All righty. Look, look the time. Me, uh, you could see. Still throw us a few more likes, though. You bundles of sticks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on, Come you on. British cigarettes. Hit a little button. Just hit the button. 219. We're up. All We're right. up some. That's cool. There we go. All righty. Uh, Alex Patino comes back. Game of $5. I don't know how the how true this is, but I did hear that Vietnam, after some firefights, bodies of Chinese officers were found. It could be. Hmm. Advisors. Advisors. Yep. I... I could is i could see that i could see that i know one or two russians were found i've just never personally heard any stories of uh any chinese being found that's i that means i haven't heard the story yeah is all that means i mean i don't know it doesn't mean it didn't happen uh, somebody yeah, says that's... john churchill also knows mad jack was the guy with the sword yes yeah. mad jack yep Magic. Yep. That's how, that rings a bell. All right. We've got a uh, Dean Krantz with $5 uh, in 1978, China invite uh, 1978, just to make sure uh, China invaded Vietnam by land, but were cr- uh, quickly repulsed. Yeah. Yeah. Like Vietnam just got done fighting us off and China thought they're going to roll in there. Yeah. Fuck those guys. Yeah. Not going to happen. Yeah, USA is the greatest military. Uh, we laugh in Vietnam. We laugh at Vietnamese. <laughs> they had some good fighters. I hate, I hate, I hate no to say it, but they, fighters. They did. But then again, then again, the uh, the entire Vietnam War was uh, started by some stupid bullshit. Uh-huh. But then again, that is also okay, a okay. So a bunch of papers from the nineteen forties. 40- 748 Potsdam conference were declassified a bunch of years ago. And it turns out this little fellow from Vietnam approached the Americans. He was a fan of the American constitution, had a Uh picture of George Washington on the wall in his office and uh, said, Hey, the French have colonized us and we would really like your help, you know, resolving that. And the Americans said, no, we just fought a war with the French. We're allied with the French. Go pound sand, you little yellow bastard. And then, yeah. So that little fella went to the Russians and said, hey, we'd really like your help with French colonialism. And the Russians said, sure, that sounds like fun. <laughs> that little fellow was Ho Chi Minh. Ho Chi Minh. Yep. Yes. Oh, America little... had the opportunity to have never had a Vietnam War. That little guy? Don't worry about that little guy. Don't worry about that little guy. Uh, let's roll through these super cats. Roll. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm just bringing up the uh, the cards here that Airman Fitzwell sent us in. They finally did come through. There's quite a few of them, but they're fucking glorious, and I don't want to. I want to ruin them for myself. So, all right. Let's see. Uh, I've got a Dark Knight 4.99. Off topic. Did you see that jellyfish UFO video in Iraq? I have uh, not in, seen in, that video. In 2018. Yeah, I have not seen that. One. I haven't seen that either. I heard about it. I heard about it. But I didn't see the video. Yeah, I, I need to see that. 
Let's see. All righty. Uh, let's see. I just want to scroll back up through the uh, the Rumble chat. Again, gentlemen, I apologize. I refreshed the Rumble chat, and it kicks out all the Super Chats and whatnot there. So uh, if you do send one in, I'm sure Steve will uh, scroll back through and check them. I haven't seen a new one in the Rumble chats yet. No, I've I'm, right. I'm watching the Rumbles. Let me uh, jump over here to uh, the MGTOW.TV, the best chat on the internet. If you're not on MGTOW, if you're not. if you're not enjoying the uh, the conversations that Steve and Pop had, and then I jump in and put my two cents in, uh, the 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 chat over on MGTOW will tie you over. Trust yeah. me. Trust me. <laughs> I don't want to know. And if I've if seen some offended, of the MGTOW stuff. <laughs> if you get offended by the chat on MGTOW TV, I'm going to say it again. Just, I don't fucking care. I'm not here to police what you guys look at or what you fucking say. That's not my fucking job. Quit fucking crying about it and drive the fuck on. You just yep. watch another channel. Quit yeah. fucking crying. Yeah. Because there's, we're on like six, seven channels. Seven, yeah, I know. Stop crying. I know. We, it just get we get a couple of guys like you know uh, the MGTOW <laughs> chat. There's just too much porn. Uh, I shut the fuck up. Yeah, it's like you, you have you have to ret retention. You know, keep your audience's uh, attention retained. Well, so you know, maybe you throw in you know a couple butts. So maybe some a pair of nice uh, nice twenty five mile an hour front bumpers. Yeah, some nice, <laughs> nice hooligans. Oh, I got a rumble one here. Broken Pine 284 uh, says no comment on sewer juice from Pop. <laughs> that might be a whole different show. That's a whole other show. There's a, there's, a, there's a lot of tunneling going on there. There's a lot of rabbit holes. There's a lot of rabbi holes. To go down there. <laughs> rabbi <Yeah>. holes. <laughs> <laughs> let, let, let's just say let's just say the latke guys got 30 seconds <laughs> <laughs> you're going down the rabbi hole uh, huh? uh, but uh yeah jumping over to the uh, the MGTOW chat here uh steve uh you're gonna have to play this one uh single for life says uh steve or jimmy please play hillbilly hillary Oh God damn it! Why are you so cruel to everybody? Where did it go? It, it, it's I right. I know I didn't it's close right, it. That's it right there. You just got to rewind it. Oh, I got to rewind it. He already played it once. Well, I yeah, I know we already again. played it once, but uh, I mean, you guys are sadistic. <laughs> I fucking hate that. I fucking hate that. That is just God, that's so, terrible. That is terrible. So scarred for life. God, that's that is scarred, terrible. Man. But it's so scarred. We're gonna we're gonna make it up to you, gentlemen, um, at the end of the show because uh, Billy Von Baum has oh. come through with yeah. a new masterpiece. Oh, you're gonna love this. I I asked him to. I personally asked him to do this work of art. A few months ago, he couldn't get to it. He couldn't get to it, which is no worries. He finally got to it. We're going to treat you guys to that at the end of the show. So don't worry. I hope it makes up for the hillbilly Hillary. <laughs> the, 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 I'm going I'm to drop this one here because I love Dear Sarge. Where was the grumpy sergeant that didn't show his face that was on a week or two ago? He was a hoot. Uh, Dear Sarge is on from time to time. He shows up when he shows up. Yeah, and you know what? That's part of his gimmick. He doesn't like to show his face, which is fine. Right. Yep. Dear Sarge is awesome. He's yeah. always more than welcome to come back on the show. He's a butterface anyway. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah, he is. Let's see, uh, we've got a crazy uncle over on uh, MGTOW.TV with $10. Don't forget that. Uh, don't forget socialists like China and Russia have only three options when resources get too tight. Uh -huh. One, cause war with someone else. That lowers the population and everyone is willing, willingly sacrificed. Two, cause a civil war. Extremism, extreme uh, civil disobedience uh, slash antifa slash uh, loose gay but talking queers. Yep. This will lower the population, allowing more for everyone left. Three, Lower your population through nefarious means, uh, disease, famine, pestilence, or using, quote unquote, secret polices or mercenaries. I'm going to add one more onto that. Let's just say a, uh, a preferred poke and smoke that wasn't 
that was that quote wasn't really forced upon us but then when it came to the states it was quote forced upon us uh-huh there you go it's got a fan i am two dollars uh have you noticed the crazy uh, dictators all dress weird stalin mao uh, uh-huh. sezong uh kim jong-un fidel castro and now zelensky yeah, what they're doing is trying to dress like the common man, but they always get it wrong. Yeah, yeah. fuck them. Yep, got a James twelve twenty five uh, three dollars. Uh, this army is not of your forefathers. It's an army of the Marxist states of America with a K. Uh, voting will not save the republic. It is long dead. Prepare. My fellow Black Pillar is in the chat. I love it. it. It's a I, I am of that opinion yeah. as well. See, we, see I, no I, I, I actually I actually made a uh, a meme. It was the, the Drake meme where he's like, eh, and then he's giving a thumbs up. It's not it's not so much being blackpilled, it's more about being a realist, yes. understanding how things are fucking going on, and you are again preparing accordingly. Correct. Yes. Just saying. See, uh, Single for Life is coming back. It says, uh, Pop, I have the 75 years plan. So he's got 10 years on you, Pop. Uh, all, right. Mm-hmm. all right. All right. Cool. Yeah, hell yeah. Live as long as you want, guys. Live as long as you want. And I love it. I support it. <laughs> uh, got uh, James 1225 coming back. Uh, $2. Uh, the American Ar- Army officer dress uniform is looking more like a communist and socialist scrambled egg award spread. On comrade officer's chest. Yeah, uh, that's a good point. They are pushing toward the old Russian model there. Potemkin awards all. Hmm. That is it. And a uh, single for life coming back. Uh, Millie, uh, is he from the fake rock group Millie Vanilli? <laughs> well, he's definitely, in my opinion, a fake general. So, yes. Yeah. Well, he uh, definitely has the, uh, the golden knee pads and... Uh, well, the chapstick and flavored his uniform meat meat. do not match his military record. No, no. no. So got a Mount Man. That. Yep, got Mount Man ninety three ninety five with ten dollars. Instead of buying a quart of beef, go to the FFA four H Junior Livestock Auction at your local fair this spring or summer. By supporting a local student who's eventually going to go into production agriculture in his or her future. And those proceeds will help support his or her higher education Hmm. in that field. I support that. Fuck yeah. From FFA Farms. Yep. I from FFA Farms. So I'm already there with you. Yep. Yep. Then you gentlemen can split it four ways and in the process announce your channel as the buyers. So others know to tune into your channels. That's at the auction. You help a student and get some publicity. Yeah. Yeah. I regularly support FFA. I live up in farm country. Yeah. Yep. Hell yeah. Yep. And we got a crazy uncle coming back. Uh, how could a country China win a war when the road wheels of their tanks are falling off just from driving? The rockets have just had their propellant uh, drained to cook their food, replaced with water, and their, quote, soldiers fire a grand total of 60 rounds in their career. That's well, about correct. They drain the brake yeah. fluid and add raisins to make uh, alcohol too. That's awesome. Yeah, that's so dumb. Uh, I'd I, I'd rather add raisins to my potato salad. You're a freak. Yeah. No, fuck that. Uh, well, t- yeah, yeah. Uh, let's roll. Yeah, 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 yeah. Next. See, uh, all right, we'll jump over to uh, Odyssey here. Actually, let me uh, jump back here. Uh, jumping over back off to. The YouTube got H12 saying trying again. Ah, okay, here it is. From H12, the result of daredevil kids turn into superior men because of genetics. The ones that live uh, live to re- reach adulthood are the next generation. Hmm. Okay, yeah, that is that is a very damn good point, and I did see that so. I did see that uh, chat uh, earlier. I just wanted to make sure on that one. So, all right. Yeah, for for like supporting a, evidence of Jimmy's previous statement, yeah. read the legend of Kahalan. Hmm. Yes. Oh, Alrighty. 
Yep. Uh, all righty, Steve. If any other uh, Rumble chats pop up, I have not seen any new super chat come out of Rumble. No. I've all righty. Uh, I just want to go back and make sure uh, before we jump on to Odyssey. Got a uh, one more from a uh, single from Life. He says, uh, "Kanana Da <laughs> is already lost." Yeah. Yep. It's yeah. Sad. I like Canada. Yeah. Pop. Let's pop. Let's just go ahead and. Uh, hey, stand by. I gotta take this. this is my ma calling. Uh oh. What's up, Ma? I'm upstairs in my room. Uh huh. Uh oh. Here, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll mute that real fast here. I'll jump over to the uh, the Odyssey chat here. So you got a uh, Ellie card, seventeen seventy six. He's asking for it, so well, got to give it to him. <laughs> that gentleman i can't turn my phone off my mom's at home sick so that's fair nope, nope. that's no that's no problem pop we're here she's for you man stronger though so that's a good thing oh yeah as that's long good. as she as long Everything as she's right? at yeah, yeah she's fine i just gotta yep as long as she's asking for another cheeseburger oh, we, yeah. we know mama papa's all right when she's asking for another cheeseburger yep <laughs> see uh I'm picturing a Charlie Brown voice when Pops Bombs calls. You're not a, you're not that far off. No. Womp, yeah. womp, womp. <laughs> See, uh, Ali Card's got a couple more here in a row. He's got a update on the no talk situation. He only spoke once within the ten day period, and he said this. And he said this. I might only speak once, so listen well. No bullshit. To who is the he you are referencing? Referencing there, good sir. Say that one more time. The, what? what, what? Uh, the the uh, the comment is a uh, update on the no talk situation. He only spoke once within the ten day period, and he said this: "I might only speak once, so listen well. No bullshit." I have no idea who that is. Well, I don't know what that is. Yeah, we're gonna need some. Uh, we're gonna need some context for that one. And he says uh, his next one is uh, they were in complete shock. And uh, Senior Ammon Dick Fitzwell, we I did get your cards. So we're going to uh, go through some cards here. Can find the correct way to share them. All right. Uh, let's see here. Damn it. Oh, I think, I, hang on. Uh, slides, is that how I do it? Let's see here. Yep. Let me uh, bring those up here. Do, do, where are they at here? Uh, let's see. Uh, let me uh, figure out a different way to do that here for a second here. There's still uh, some learning we, curves, man. So. Yeah. I, I need a, I still need to go back and figure out the way that Blake does those, but I do, I can bring those up here. See, uh, to do, uh, Ali Card, uh, a friend of mine cursed the journalist who doxed him with explosive diarrhea for six to 30 months wow. with a random relief period. Okay, <laughs> that's wow, brutal. that's brutal. Yeah, that's brutal. I don't know, man. That, that's that, that, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good lenience, six to 30 months. Well, I mean, when but I a random back. a random period of relief, mm. why would you give them any kind of relief? No, when I when I came back from Iraq, I had diarrhea for like thirty six fucking months in a row. Not surprised. And I literally had to drink two gallons of colloidal silver, which I brewed myself in my my lab, uh, the mad scientist lab yeah. in the bathroom upstairs. I literally yeah. drank it in a this day. A I drank story. I drank two gallons yeah. of, uh, you know, with with the colloidal silver shit my fucking brains out and then the next day i started taking uh one of those uh 
pills that rebuild your gut flora mm -hmm. cured it there you go boom done that's what the kvass i was talking about does yeah well i had to basically kill everything in there first right repop it. got it yeah yeah there you go yeah all righty i think uh actually you evict all the getaway uh, ghetto I'd... iraqi bacteria yep did we cover everything on MGTOW? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Uh, I'm just trying to bring up the... Uh... Nope, I'm going to have to do it this way here. All right. Entire screen. And bring up this screen. Boom. There we go. All righty. Oh. These, are, these are the uh, the cards. The Fitzwill Urban Dictionary Original Terms from Fitzy. The weenus. <laughs> Definition. Combination of two words, wiener and penice, spliced together to make a funny word. Used in a sentence, Pops X has a, had a lot of weenuses from the non-melanin challenging, challenged men in her, allegedly. <laughs> you are now in the know. Take a car from the deck. <laughs> All right. That's actually pretty funny. Meat in the seat. Meat in the seat. Salami jockey. Pops X loves to hit the bar bar at least three times a week to give her gash to make some cash. Again, allegedly. You're going to get me sued. One of her favorite moves is called the meet in the seat. Basically, a guy is seated and she rides him like a bucking bronco. Then her finisher is, is in a few spins around his knack to get him off. Sorry, Pop. This is a descriptive, descriptive image. Making the popster cringe, steal some of his herbal tea and run for dear life. <laughs> God. Where did these come from? I have no idea. Man. Uh, uh, Pop safety briefing number 36. 36. Good manners <laughs> is the art of making people comfortable. Whoever makes the fewest people uncomfortable has the best manners. That's not me. That's not me either. No, I don't care about you. I'll just company. tell you the truth. I'm gonna give a shit about your feelings. Gunt, gunt foo. Oh God! God. That's oh brutal. crap! It's brutal. God, damn. Uh, I, oh, God. God damn it! Why did I drink the rest of my beer? I need a beer right now because this these images are oh they kill me. Uh, gunt and fupa combo of doom. <laughs> As Blake plays the hillbilly Hillary. Pop starts to wig out and tries to look for a way from the way, uh, look away as the gun foo of doom invades his peripheral vision. Despite looking away, he has seen in the past and in, and the mental image got knife handed in his thinking meat forever being seared in his memory. Hillbilly, God, that's terrible. <laughs> Hillbilly Hillary has also invaded your thinking meat without your knowledge. Oh. Thanks, man. You and the popster have nightmares and cannot sleep. You and a buddy who plays who plays his pop look up some uh, orn pay to unfuck this thinking me situation. Uh, after finding some nice butts and sharing it with the group, take another card from the deck. Ugh. God, he's terrible. Pops X. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 61. Jesus Christ. How 61. Allegedly. How many cocks did it take? How many cocks did you have to take for that face to stretch that much? Also, those cocks were definitely diseased. <laughs> okay. God. God damn that savage. Uh, Allegedly, you're gonna get me fucking sued, man. Allegedly. Digital Dave's damsel. When is lonely too lonely? Since di since Digital Dave has been very lonely for several years, he remembered that one of his friends checked out a fuck doll fuck doll site one one day. Logging onto that one site, he discovered a plethora of different types of dolls you can order. Being a milf guy, he ordered a milf doll with big old titties. <laughs> arriving several weeks later from the China. Dave enthusiastically opens up the box. After checking her out, he promptly brings her into the, his bedroom for some diabolical shagnanigans. One day, without noticing, he had the blinds open. Dave carried her to his family room over his shoulder. Mm. One of his neighbors saw this and called the police. Plays Dave and give two players who, play, who plays the SWAT team one card each from your deck. 
Jesus, God. Where did this come from? Why are we being subjected to this? I just like to fuck with me. It's all good. It did. The, the pop cards became a, a thing one of these days. We got to have these fucking printed because they're fucking gold. Yeah, they are pretty funny. Uh, Pop's tired liver. Finally a break. After 30 plus years of drinking alcohol and using Ambien to sleep, Pop wanted to give his liver a break. Pop's liver is very tired and needs to go somewhere very far away to recoup. Sounds familiar to me. Uh, Pops Liver went on uh, Travago and booked himself a flight to Barbados for a 14 day stay. <laughs> and Barbados, instead of relaxing like it, it should have, his liver decides to party with a bunch of fine looking redheads drinking whiskey and smoking a lot of joints. What could go wrong? After getting drunk, he escorts several be uh, biatches to the dumb cumster out back for some sexy shag nanigans. Pop's liver had the time of its life. However, after returning back to pop into Pop's body, his liver started getting sick, which made the popster sick. Lose a turn and go to the doctors to get cured. Ted, it's, you're going to die. <laughs> God. I do that. Listen, I've been resting my liver for about a yep. month. All righty. Looks like uh, this is the last one here. Chad Rocket Crotch. Oh. The meat, the meat bat. Meat bat. <laughs> Jesus, you guys. Since Chad is your alter ego, you get a lot of poon at the bar bar. You're hung like a donkey. Donkey. Your name, <laughs> you name your redon redonkulous wiener, weenus, the meat bat. <laughs> your meat bat likes to take swings at the full German redheads. There you give the 10 dick gonad collisions out by the dumb cumster. During one sex capade, you pick up the 10th degree stalker who somehow finds out where you live. Yikes. What could go wrong? In a stealth, uh, stealthful manner, take a shot of booze from an unexpected player that when you have a chance. Fair Jesus enough. Christ, these fucking cards. That's, oh, that's not, we love those cards and the amount of work you put into them. It's fucking thank you so much. Oh, those are awesome. All right. Let me uh, just double check here. Uh, any other uh, chats over on Rumble there, Steve? I have not seen any. I have not seen any either. All righty. Well, we will uh, move on through here. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Got a MGTOW is covered. We were over on Odyssey. That's where we were at. Uh, Ali Card, uh, a friend of mine, cursed a journalist. Uh, yep, the one we read. Uh, Tatsuya, lung bruising from beating, from beating can cause pneumonia pop. Just saying they probably aren't lying, but it's not the whole story. Yeah, you, you are correct. That is correct. I have heard quite a few stories about a uh, good friend, uh, Coach Red Pill. Again, I don't know what is true, what is not. Yeah, I hope. So, and listen, I mean, if he's dead, he's dead. But there's, like I said, fuck Ukraine. You know, I mean that that that's just reprehensible, in my opinion. It's yeah, it, it's bad. But uh, yeah. There's, and there's nothing I, I could have done to, to save the guy. I mean, I just don't have that kind of pull. Oh. No. Oh, so uh, I just got a, a text from uh, Sean St. George. Uh, he says, uh, Jimmy saw a post from Billy Von Baum. Don't play the new video because it will create a copyright claim. Hmm. Well, God damn it, God damn it, God damn it. We're going to have to save that for... Alt Technics on Thursday. For for Thursday on Alt Tech. Okay. So uh if you if you yeah, want yeah, to yeah. know if you want to know what the video is, go to billyvonbomb.com, Billy Von Bomb on YouTube. Maybe it'll still be up, maybe not. It's, it's that copyright dig is such crap. That shows it that's like 40 years old. Yeah. 30 yeah, well, Steamboat Willie just became public domain, and that's been 95 years. Yeah, you're right. So, I know, no crap. Tis a bitch, and it is tis 
a bitch, and well, then you die. Tis a bitch, and a little bit on the. Uh, yeah, let's just let, let's you, let's just say to to be you know politically correct, it's got an extra chromosome or two. Yeah. So. Uh, anyways, going back to the chats, uh, Alucard, he also cursed the spokesperson with the wither away curse. Why they burst into flames when they step into the sun and have to feed on the corrupt and continues to wither away while feeding and die. Hmm. I think Alucard may or may not be playing some, uh, Dungeons and Dragons shit with those, uh, chats. Could be. Could be. <laughs> Got a colonizer grind set. Uh, George Bush Sr. was the director of the CIA. Who are you worried about offending here? That's right. He was in the SA. Yep. And uh, to, an to answer you, to answer the uh, second part of your question, not a single fucking person. Yeah. Yep. Yep. When we were overseas, we ran across those guys. We referred to them as Christians in action. That's funny. They didn't like that. No. It upset them. Yep. Let's see, care. we got a uh, uh, wing it prod. Uh, he's got 11 Bravo, 11 Mike, and 13 Bravo. All right, so it's uh, what so it's just... infantry? What was the other one? 11 Mike, uh, 13 11 Bravo. Mike, that's Bradley, and then and 13. 13 Bravo engineers. Engineer, okay, yep. Got a Mustanger 65. They're trying to pull recruitment out of a nosedive by having the Air Force chick as Miss America. Where the honkies at? <laughs> yeah I, 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 that's so stupid oh miss america is a fucking enlisted chick uh ask me if i care and then ask me again in five years if i care i can guarantee my get my answer is gonna be the same thing I that my answer is gonna be fuck off and suck a dick uh caleb bond uh remember they had a guide stones telling them what they must do Georgie Guidestones that got blown up, you know, two That's years right. ago or so. They still haven't found out who did it. Yep. They just recently destroyed them. And it's been about a year and a half since they said exactly what they want to do. Yeah. It's not like those Guidestones had uh, keep the global population under 500 million or anything like that. Yeah. Yep. And I uh, got a col colonizer grand set uh, coming back. Uh, this co-host is pretty based. I'm not going to lie. Covering the Holodomor and all. Uh, it's his it's history. It just is. Yeah. I I don't yeah. mince words. I don't take sides on a lot of crap. If something happened, I'm going to talk about it. I don't care if it's unpopular. Screw yep. you. That's right. That That's is true. the battle dwarf for you. <laughs> and again, and again, I'm just here in the background to push buttons, make sure the stream runs good, and to read you guys' super chats. Other than that, I sit in the background and I let these two grunts speak their mind. <laughs> That's what it is. And we I got a Jason for the record. Yeah, yep. Yep. <laughs> Not nice. got, yep. And we got a schmuck. Tommy, what's going on, man? Uh for twenty-five dollars. Uh that is no legend. He is real and it was a Mosin. Yep. Mosin okay, going true. back to the yeah. finish. Yep. He okay. was legendary, but he was very real. Yeah. Yep. So you got uh, Tatsuya coming back. Uh, I'd like to remind people that Japan has, I believe, the fifth strongest navy in the world. That's well, true. But we'll they to look on. transitioned to offensive operations in the last year. Yep. yep. We'll have to double check on the numbers on that, but I'm, we'll take your word for it. Uh, behind the U.S., Russia, the U.K., and France. No, that's China's true. I know, I know from order of battle that that is true. Mm -hmm. Yep. China's not even the top 20 currently. Never under underestimate Japan. China uh, China made that mistake once already. Correct. Yep. And we got uh, Caleb on coming back. I have been watching this shit show and munching on popcorn. <laughs> not munching on, munching yeah. on some muff. Come on, man. <laughs> uh, Homeland. Good to see you there, good sir. Uh, China hasn't done uh, an ex expeditionary action since 1979 against Vietnam. And they failed miserably. Yep. And Caleb Bog coming back. Like Chicago, it does not affect the Beijing and the other, quote, trophy cities. If it does not help them, they do not want it. That's correct. Yep. yep. We got a uh, Fuka Yuraman. <laughs> 
<laughs> wonder who that is yeah. uh well if the chin chongs want to fuck around like that and get jumped from all sides i can assure you that the grand majority of the world will not care they've been communists for longer than russia so they're due for a collapse caused by an ass whooping or self-anal ex evisceration where cry where where <laughs> Uh, let's see, you got uh, Ali Carrot coming back. Uh, get seeds while you can because the shipping is going to be crazy since what happened in the Red Sea. Yeah, if you haven't heard, the uh, Houthis, ugh, backed by the Iranians, I believe, have sent a missile and it impacted a U.S. cargo ship. Yeah. And they yeah. attempted to fire on a U.S. ship, and those rockets were taken down by air cover, by yep. air support, or the or the whiz whiz thing. No, the sea whiz didn't get them. It was air support. Oh, it was air support? Okay. Yeah. Yep. And uh, uh, of course, all the cards asking for it. Oh God! No. It's on both my monitors. It's on both my monitors. God. Oh my Thick Hillary God. is just. Oh. Ah. I okay, looked sir. away from the one monitor just as the other monitor caught up with the feed, and it was like <laughs> <laughs> puking in two yeah. directions at the same time. Uh, right. We got a yeah, we Fuka got a Fuka Yumara uh, again. I wonder who that is, Jackal. Uh, you must want to consider a photon mail, secure, doesn't censor, and is encrypted. Just requires some payment for some storage space uh, if you keep too many emails. I'll take care of that part. Yeah, well, that's my job. We'll figure yep. it out. Yeah, we'll get we'll get that situation all unfucked or situation all unwiped. All so right. we have a clean ass to deal with. Uh, Caleb on uh, Vietnam was cons uh, was constantly interfered with by the uh, demon rats. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And uh, Ali Card 1776 uh, says, A friend of mine, Jimmy Bones. Everybody is a friend of mine as long as you, uh, yeah, as long as you're a good person, you're a friend of mine. I don't give a fuck. And uh, Ali Card coming back. Uh, my friend learned magic from actual gyromones, uh, gyromones, Jimmy Bones, for example, lesser look, lesser, a lesser book of Solomon. Hmm. Okay. Might have to uh, take. I've watched some stuff on the on the uh, Solomon demons and how we control them and stuff. It's kind of interesting reading, actually. Yep. Alrighty. It looks like let me just do a head count over on all the other spots here. Gonna refresh everything because everything's got me fucked up. Rubble God damn it. See, uh, I just want to do a quick refresh here on the emails. Make sure we're not going to miss any any cash apps that come in. Yep. I haven't seen any in there. Nothing there. All right. Let's see. We got two whole viewers over on Kick. Oh yeah. Well, we're going to probably be rotating Kick out off the list if because yep. we have. I mean. Really it Yep, it, it does have very good vi video quality, and it has been keeping up. It's it's just yeah, not a platform that it's just not growing. No. Uh, I don't know. Well, I, I I I can I'm looking over her on the left hand side. Uh, Aiden Ross is just chatting. He's got fifty four thousand people in his chat. Wow. So there's a couple others that are above a thousand. And whatnot. So, yeah, yeah, might be good to hang on. Just, just to hang on. Well, we, yeah, we'll figure yep, it out. Yep, we got fifteen. Like figure out how to market. On. Well, yep, here, here's got, the thing. Right, let, let, let's get over the super on, chats, and we'll talk about this offline. Yep, got a uh, fifteen over on Twitch. We got ten over on D Live. Of course, Odyssey is rocking twenty nine. We got 
How many over on MGTOW if the MGTOW will load? 52. Because MGTOW is the best chat on the internet. We got 52 over there. And Rumble is rocking 790. Thank you guys for sticking Rumble around. Rumble was close and... to 1,000 at one point. Yes, it was just a cunt hair and yep. one nipple away from 1,000. And Rumble is outdoing YouTube with, and YouTube is only doing 559. I think we got up to almost 900 on YouTube. Yep. And uh, I just see uh, Demaster12 with $2. Seeing Razor Fist vid on Lincoln. What do you think? Huh. Uh, send that over in an email. I'm pretty sure Pop will take a look at it and whatnot. Yes, all that good stuff. So, but, all righty. Um, I don't know, Pop. Is it worth the uh, the risk of uh, playing the... Uh, nah, the let's, let's not schedule? play it on here. We, I don't want to get a copyright strike. <laughs> So All right, we'll we'll Thursday play that for you guys on uh on Thursday. But uh, if you haven't seen it, maybe Billy will do some tweaking with the uh, the the music because I guarantee you that's what caught it. Uh huh. It is what it is because YouTube is asshole. Gotcha. So. But uh, already, pop. I believe uh we're done for the night. And All right, everybody. A safety briefing. All right, don't drink and drive. Don't drink and swim. Doesn't work out. Wear a condom if you must fornicate. Watch it go down the toilet or take it with you when you leave. Maintain your situational awareness. Rack up, pack up, and stack up because shit's getting real out there. And if you must engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat, do everything in your power to run away first. And secondly, do everything in your power not to go to the ground because that's where you get stomped out. And we don't need that because I'm sick of burying you motherfuckers. And stop making permanent decisions and solutions for temporary problems. Yep. All right. And all, every single one of you mother fornicators to uh, help rebuild the shit that we're in. Uh, Battle Dwarf, do you have any final thoughts for the night, good sir? I got nothing. I got nothing. No, of course he doesn't. So, <laughs> all righty, gentlemen, we will catch you on Thursday. Uh, be sure I'll uh, get in touch with Blake and say, uh, we're gonna have to do a uh, an off YouTube stream to do the uh, to show you guys <laughs> the uh, the uh, new Billy Von Baum deep fake. So well, we'll, we'll uh we'll, we'll cover that with you know an alt text. Yeah, we will, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll we'll figure something out. I can figure tell something. Jimmy is sad. We'll get to it, Jimmy. We'll get to it. I'm sad. I'm sad because it's fucking awesome. It's one of Billy's best works ever. It is. So. It is. All right. It is. But all righty, gentlemen, take it easy. We'll see you on Thursday. Take it easy.